one views, only one who interacted with it. Oh, makes sense. Starting up, let's see what's so scary about going to the store to get milk. Relating to milk, so let's see what we find on our way to the door. I can let the ad rail run. Hey, hopefully Solace is actually doing okay. Rick definitely eats most of his energy, so I can't say I'm too surprised. Here. And anything in the rat pack doesn't appear to be. And Viper should be live, right? Oh, goody. Telltale decided to fire a bunch of people, too. That's a good sign. Viper's doing paranormal sight tonight. That's certainly not too bad. It'd be interesting if I could keep him up at the same time. Realistically, I can actually. Over some stuff. Go here. Oh, welcome in, Rattle. Thank you very much for shoving yourself. That's the wrong noise. Welcome in, Rattle. Thank you very much for the raid. <laughs> Hopefully the evening's running well for you so far. See what you're up to here. Uh, shout out, Rattle. Here. Ah, Monster Hunter Rise. Very nice. I guess I'll ask the mildly obvious question, but what weapon were you using, and how far are you actually in on Rise so far? Rise? <laughs> yeah, I was farming. I'd say that's fair. Monster Hunter usually requires a good bit of farming to actually get anything done, so... I lost a save file, it was MR100. That's certainly not good. Was that something that you were playing on PC before and then you lost the save file, or... something that was on Switch and Switch did a corrupty whoopty and Nintendo has no way of solving that? 
Steam borked the cloud sync. <laughs> yeah, of course it was Steam that borked its cloud sync. Gotta love it. So you've just been working on getting back up to your proper MR status then? I don't actually remember the end game of Rise. I don't to think about it. Oh, I never got to it, that's why. I got distracted as all get out when it came to Rise. Yeah, trying to see, now that I know it, if you can get there in a shorter amount of time. Well, if it partially helps, at least the... Oh boy, rampages, that's the word. At least you don't have to worry about the rampages if you're just trying to grind yourself back up. Since that's more so a... optional thing, except for like the two mandatory ones that you have to do. Not great, but what can you do? I think the ad reel is technically done now. At least the game's fun. Oh, definitely. Monster Hunter is always a fun one to kind of work through. Let's see here. I can get rid of that for now. We can drag Ezo into it. Yeah, we could definitely see about that. I know part of the reason is just because I don't really give myself a grandstanding amount of time, at least when it comes down to keeping multiplayer stuff open. But yeah, we can definitely look into it. Because I know I'm only in MR5 right now. At least if memory serves. I have to do some of the Elder Dragon fights, so... Not 100% certain on that. Oh good, there is actual sound of this. Lovely. Yeah, it's more so just because I'm trying to stick to... Write down your name. Okay, that's a bit loud. <laughs> My name is Jude. I walk down the road to the store and rehearse my speech. Oh, it's got... Oh. Oh, that's weird. It runs a separate text-to-speech program whenever it does anything. <laughs> oh, that's a sign of a good game. Uh, okay. It's been so long since I've been out of the house that I completely forgot what words to say when entering a store. I mean, I guess I don't have to read it at least, so that's kind of nice. <laughs> that is weird. So the background music has its own separate program it's running, and then it runs text-to-speech on top of it. Okay. Now let's see what buying the milk is all about here. I'm going to the store. Okay, yeah. Going to the store is usually a relatively good thing to do. And we got choices. Cool. Who are you talking to? Shut up and go already. <laughs> okay. I guess there's probably multiple endings then if I'm we got choices. If I were a character in a game, what if it helps me gather my thoughts? I mean, that does tend to help a good bit, yeah. What? 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 I guess you what can't spam it like some other things. Are we going to play the silent game? Okay. Although that is a good question of who she's I actually talking to. Hello, can I? Crap, I forgot. Nope. <laughs> 19th attempt, and 19th. I'm failing again. I bite my lip in frustration. What are you doing here? So, once again. Hello. Can I get? Wow, that's a whole word more. That is rude, guy. Come on here. They're just anxious about trying to get milk at the store. Thank you. I'm trying my best. I think this time the L sound was longer than usual. Wow, okay, we're just a dick. At least I'm pretty sure we're the one doing these Do prompts. You think that's it? Hello, 
Can I? Ugh. I wish I hadn't said anything. Oh. Wow. Okay, uh, yeah, we are just a straight dick. Okay, that's just rude. Don't worry. Okay. May as well gaslight. See if that's a route. By the way, you've been walking with your left foot on the pavement and your right foot on the grass for a full minute now. What? By the way, <laughs> W what? So we're either a complete dick or a potential stalker. That's a bit concerning. My right foot is frozen in the air. H how much? 50 steps on the pavement and 51 in the grass. Hmm. Okay. You have to undo the previous step. What? He he he. Okay, we are just a awful person now. That's not good. That? Not the first time this has happened. It's Ugh. not the first time this has happened. This is the first row we're doing too. You've been... You've been taught the right way, haven't you? Come on. Oh, okay. So we have gaslighting or just You're so stupid. complete rude. You've been taught the right way. We'll gaslight. I, we kind of decided that earlier. I don't remember. I'm ready to burst into tears. Okay, no. So we're playing both sides of the coins then. Ugh. Here we go again. Step one, take a step back to get your foot exactly in your own step footprint. One, take a step back to get your foot exactly in your own footprint. Good sign. Wait a minute. What do you mean, step one? What? But it's already the 52nd. Or wait, I'm going backwards, so then it's the 50th. It doesn't add up. Hmm. I'm a little bit lost. But I think this is probably not the one we should have gotten first. <laughs> That's always a good sign. Step 50. Take a step back to get your own foot exactly in your own footprint. Okay. Okay. Could you rephrase it just a little bit? What do you mean rephrase it? You can't just repeat a phrase without changing at least one word. People don't talk like that. I mean, it's a good thing I'm not a person, then. You make it sound like it's my fault. The store closes the store. in an hour. You'll be very, very guilty if you don't you buy milk. Damn. Really? Hell yes. I carefully move my foot backward looking carefully into the dense grass. As I enter the store, oh. I turn to the first person I see. Stores are empty. Hello. Although we're getting here pretty late, I'm assuming. Uh. Oh. What is that? That looks like some of the blob monsters that you get in Undertale. Also, hi there, Nan. Welcome in. Hopefully you're ready to grab a bag of milk at the store. Excuse me. What? Oh. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, this is good. We got an eldritch beast that only says, oh. Excuse me. What? Oh. Am I stuck in a loop? Excuse me. What? Oh. Oh no, that's getting bigger. Excuse me. What? Oh. Okay, let's see how long it takes before it actually breaks out of the screen. Oh, <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Okay, no, it doesn't go on forever. He's obviously not going to change his lines. You run the <laughs> risk of ending up in an endless loop. Okay, I'm glad the game will just admit that now. Excuse me. What? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. What? Oh. Excuse me. What? Oh. This is supposed to be psych horror, but apparently we're just excuse in the comedy. Me. Oh, what? Jesus. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. What? Oh. It's too bad that the uh, voice line thing doesn't actually follow that. Also, non. Fun fact that I'm learning about this now. Uh, the text-to-speech for this game runs in a separate program than what the music does, as according with my audio splitter. <laughs> so that's a fun fact that I'm not sure if a lot of people pay attention to. What? What's he what trying, to, he tell trying you? to tell you? That he's surprised that you're there, apparently. He's trying to scare me. But how does he know that I'm terrified by the letter? Oh, it doesn't actually say the O oh, there. That's weird. What's so scary about it? I have a frightening image when I picture it in my head. 
I mean, that's fair. We can barely see it. I can show you. Explaining won't be enough, but keep in mind that it'll cost me a dozen nerve cells. Oh, just a dozen. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't even click on anything for that to pop up. Also, that's mildly unsettling. Something like that. Ah. <laughs> God, that's... Gave me the chills. So, I'll just continue to ignore his question. Okay. What? Oh. <laughs> oh. What? Oh. I'll continue to ignore his question. What? What continues oh. in the train? W-H-A-T? Oh, nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I gather all my will into a fist. Oh, we're just gonna sock the thing. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh? Hey, there's an exclamation point. It's different this time. My interlocutor shook and crawled away. Oh. That was an achievement. Okay. I guess we got a successful punch. repeated after him. And, and it, it worked. worked. <laughs> Do it more often. Wait. Okay. I said he crawled away. So, Did aside from the random eye pop, away. this is kind of just I mean, fun so far. I didn't even look in his direction. Hmm. When exactly, when exactly did you say that? Just now. Personally, I didn't hear it. Ugh. You're just trying to distract me. Oh yeah, alright, we gaslit our way here, didn't we? But I know so I guess we're gonna continue doing that. On the screen. I'm standing by the shelves. On the rack there are bags of milk. I mean that's a good sign. That's what we're here for. I mean hell, I even came prepared. I've got a bag of milk right there. We both stand. And the milk lies. Or maybe. Slow down, do you even remember why you're here? I mean, we're here to get okay. milk. To buy milk. Right here. What do you expect me to say? Um, I guess something like not here. Oh, we actually have options. Not here, take the bag and go to the cash register. You're getting on my nerves. Hey, Frank. Welcome in. Not Hopefully you're enjoying your evening so here. far. I guess the first sentence. We're just trying to get some milk. You know, it's a pretty common Thursday and task. Milk, as if out of spite, didn't pause before the second one. You want to rob me of my little victories? <laughs> uh, probably. I sigh and reach out to take the milk. Or rather, the bag with the milk inside. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag. <laughs> We rather, get the title drop. A bag of milk inside a bag of milk. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag. <laughs> or rather, We're just driving this girl to insanity. A bag of milk inside. 15, 15 minutes, minutes before the storm before. closes? Oh, I okay. Remembered what these games are called. Alert Visual for now. Probably nice rest of the stream. Alright, thanks for dropping by, Rattle. Thank you again for the raid, and hopefully you can have a good time chilling out. And by the way, you can rest your swinging arm in full with letters. <laughs> are visual novels worse than books? But they're the authors are not lazy, so don't get lazy either. I think that is actually the right there in this case. Not only your thoughts are visible on screen. Not anymore, so watch your mouth. <laughs> hmm. Okay. You heard me, hurry up and you'll get it at the Oh, good, there's child abuse in this, too. That's always good. I'm on my way. Hello. See, can I G get some milk, please? Oof. That's a nice little alien yeah. creature. H. Ah. Give. I put a weighty bag on the register. Of course, not just the bag, but the milk. I'd Two. be a little bit concerned if you were actually able to put just the bags on the counter. Can I? Can I have it? Please. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> please. Come on. No. It's just a bag of milk. But please. Mom will throw me out of the window if I get back without milk. Hmm. N O O O. <laughs> but why not? Give more. Give more. But I don't have anything else. Do we not have enough cash here, or...? What? Wow. I think part of this is that our 
inner monologue is talking to us during this, and that's what we're hitting. So I just feel very sorry for this girl. Um, we've been gaslighting the entire time, so it feels weird to do those two. Haha, <laughs> really? What would I do without you? I take a crumpled bill out of my pocket and hand it to the cashier. Yay, milk. He starts to carefully examine it. It took about two days before he nodded contentedly Wait, and put it in the cash register. I'm sorry, two days? I get that E.T. was a slow game, but like, come on, dude. Thank you. Goodbye. Still, he let us buy the milk, so that's good. I walked down a familiar street past a gas station. I was about to say... I'm guessing we didn't buy milk from the gas station. A bag of milk unpleasantly tugs at my hand, reminding me of the days when I was in physical therapy. Oh. Oh, that's not good. By the way, they gave me a bag at the checkout, so now I'm carrying a bag of milk in another bag. <laughs> Don't think anything of it. I just love the pyramidal structure of verbal constructions. This child the gas is gas station fun. is getting closer. Wait, the gas station's getting closer? Why Thank is the gas station getting closer? I feel like a mile long bar of ice cream. As if I'd tell you. Hmm. I'm really interested. You're just a weirdo. I'll, well, I'll say, I'm curious. The ratio of water to milk in the volume of air occupied by me is about 30 to 1. The ratio of water to milk in the volume of air occupied by me is about 30 to 1. And huh. yet. Ice cream is not the best. Unless you want to drink more than eat. Canada is weird. Your gas stations don't approach you? Unfortunately, anyway, no. The road from the store to the gas station is a stick, and the road from the gas station to home is ice cream. At least when I last went to a gas station, they usually, like, stay rooted in the ground and don't shuffle towards you awkwardly. I'm not sure about you, During Frank, but walk, gas stations don't need the exercise. Simple math. I feel movement under my feet. Asphalt grains, petrol hmm. stains. Potentially a good start to a wrap. I'm trying to keep my balance. And how do people move over something as uneven as the city plane? This is why America is so dependent on cars. I can imagine if you're having to outrun gas stations wherever you go, you're going to need to actually punch it pretty hard. Gently, eel, to. I count in my mind every meter of the path I walk. I even close my eyes for more concentration. Fair. Yeah, but you don't want to walk into Eight. something here. I unconsciously take a sharp step to the side. At the same moment, Wait. a huge bear rushes past me with a wild screech. Wait, just a straight up bear? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's probably a good sign that we're not in Kansas at least. This is why America's so dependent on cars or gas stations come to greet us like solicitors. Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Solace is a walking campfire, and gas stations can go up pretty hard if you just throw one spark in a very precise spot. <laughs> Bear. I cast a reproachful glance at the swiftly departing <laughs> giant. And then our natural response is, Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> its red eyes, in turn, look at me with mockery. Wait, mockery? Did you see that? How brazen. A bear rushed past you and it just looked at you mockingly. Like, ugh. Short stack. It was a truck. <laughs> oh, really? Although, if you think about it, are there bears with eyes on the back of their heads? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. Girl's hallucinating. Although, imagining a truck as a bear does at least make some sense. Could have died. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying someone would seriously want to kill an innocent girl carrying a bag of milk? Yes, actually. That's a very, very prime target, especially if you look weak and the mention of physical therapy is a bit of a problem. They added TTS to milk inside? Yeah, they did. Admittedly, it's a little bit weird because it runs as a separate program to the main game, and so it's not always constantly active, so if you need to adjust volume, it's a bit of a problem. But welcome in, Twisted. Hopefully the evening's running well for you so far. We're just trying to see the if this actually counts as horror, hate. but... I'm not in the world you're talking about. So far, I can see where it's trying to go with the horror front, but it hasn't quite hit me fully yet. I do like it, though. 
And the at least added TTS My is a good continues. touch. If you think Makes for an easy it, visual novel, at least. From the store has one interesting property. It adjusts to me in the most bizarre ways. Not really that horror that you would expect. Yeah, from what it seemed, it just kind of feels like it's trying to fuck with your head a little bit instead of actively scaring you, when which I'm I fine with. Hurry, I kind of like that. Lights turn off helpfully. When I feel like crying, a cloud appears over me and pours rain streams that hide my tears. Mm. Right now, I can feel a cloud slowly gathering over the top of my head. Mm. That's not good I'm for sad. you. Why are you sad, though? You have your milk. What else could it be? Has it ever occurred to you that it's just all in your head? I mean... That's not what the manual said at all. Wait, the manual? How'd you get a manual? I didn't get a manual for life. Apparently, these pills don't work for me either. Oh. That's not good. <laughs> Please. I just want to get home and go to bed. I really, really am very grateful to you. But, please, no more. Hmm. I guess that would make sense if the voice in your head is gaslighting and belligering you just while you're trying to go home. Also, welcome in, Aiden. Hopefully the evening is running well. Uh, this is a spoopy game that I've had in my library for a while now, and figured October is a good time for that. But how are things on your side? You have to accept the truth. From what I can at least understand so far, our character was tasked with going to the store to get milk, but they are physically unwell and mentally unwell to the point of... I'm not sure if schizophrenia is the proper word, but they have a second consciousness just in their head talking to them this entire time, and their visuals on everything are warped extremely. But our side, which is the second personality, can at least tell what everything is. Which is interesting, but mildly confusing. You have to accept the truth. No. Granted, we were also gaslighting them most of the way at the start, so it's kind of interesting that we're just going hardball on to the fact that they need to actually open their eyes and not imagine trucks as bears. No. Oh, can we loop this? Not fully loop it. Oh, Jesus. Looks like Jude doesn't help me at all. Well, that's why there's text-to-speech. <laughs> and it got my name right. That's a good sign. Uh, I guess I'll try something else next time. <laughs> Not this time. Yeah, no kidding. Write down your name. Damn. Okay, that is a bit quick. Dude, let's try this again. Again. Yes. I hope we can do it this time. Good commenting. It actually logs your name. I like that. I walk down the road to the store and rehearse my speech. Okay. It's been so long since I've been out of the house that I completely forgot what words to say when entering the store. I appreciate store. the very Canadian milk bag. I mean, I am a Canadian robot. I figured I at least have to put the bag of milk there while we're doing this, since that is the main plot of the game. I'm going to the store. Hmm. Last time we did that. So why don't we just... Shut up be rude already. the entire time? H hey, aren't you supposed to help me? I take a deep breath of air. <laughs> that game over screen gives you a hint about who you are here as a player. Hello, can yeah. I? Yeah. From my thoughts, at least, it's something in her head. It doesn't seem like we're a physical being, but it's either. We are who this girl originally was before, and she just hates herself, or a second personality that has just developed during this Crap. entire time period. Nineteenth attempt, and I'm failing again. You're you naming a physical being now. You're not wrong. So, once again, haven't we talked to her in her head though? I guess our text bubbles don't necessarily imply that they're thoughts aside Hello, from the brackets. Can I get? Wow, that's a whole word more. Yeah, we could be a brother. Thank you. I'm trying my best. Vex milk. Welcome in. Well. Do you think that's it? Hello. 
can I? Oh, he even got the triple L. Ugh. I wish I hadn't said anything. There was mention of a mother. It doesn't imply a father at all. Jude out here narrating the game for real. I mean, of course, I have to double take on this, don't I? <laughs> I mean, we may as well see what happens being pure mean does. Don't insult me, please. Oh, that's a bigger paragraph. Oh no, this is the foot thing, right? W what? Sometimes that starting screen be like right down your name. My oh yeah. Is frozen in the air. That's what's. I'm putting Jude into for that, which is why we got the... I guess Jude's not very helpful. I guess I don't need him anymore. H how much? H Although how it does kind of seem like we're a dick either way. Or at the very least, most of our content seems to be us being a dick, or... It's not the first... You it's all being taken as a bit of a dickish move. You're oh! Okay, we got there a lot quicker this time. Looks like Jude doesn't help me at all. I guess I'll try something else next time. I think that's bigger than the last time, too. <laughs> that's actually a bit concerning. Is that because I speed ran it? Write Ooh. down your name. That sound is just nerve wracking. <laughs> to be fair, not too many voices in my head are kind, so it tracks. Fair. <laughs> Actually, what happens if we change? Doesn't I mention it at all. Okay. The store and rehearse my speech. It's been so long since I've been out of the house that I completely forgot what words to say when entering a store. So, she actively detests you if you're too mean to her, which is fair. If you are a physical being in this case, though... I'm going to the store. What would that line up to? Who are you talking to? I'm imagining as if I were a character in a game. What if it helps me gather my thoughts? Hmm. We could push what? her on it. But I'm just going to just stay silent. Are we going to play the silent game? Okay. That's a bit awkward. I take a deep breath <laughs> of air. You naming a drug, you are the side effect? True. Hello, can I? Wait, if I'm naming a drug? Crap. Is there actually side text if you name like a proper drug for schizophrenia? Attempt, and I'm failing again. I bite my lip in frustration. So, once again, hello, can I get? Thank you, I'm trying my best. Do you think that's it? Hello, can I? Ugh, I wish I hadn't said any. So, uh, that obviously brought us to an end last time, because we're being too mean. Don't worry. So... Let's be nice. Okay. Is the milk inside the bag yet? I mean, Isa, we're in Canada. The milk's always in a bag. <laughs> so welcome in. Hopefully the evening's running well. It's not that complex. It was made in three days. Oh, okay. H, how do you imagine? I guess it's a simple it's little game the jam then, time this has happened. which kind of explains the mosaic and slightly monotoned backgrounds. It's... You've been taught the right way, haven't you? Mm. Where I... the cookies at? This damn I milk and no remember. cookies? I, I mean, we're just going to the store to get milk, Will. Or apparently a little bit too poor, so we may not even be able to... Oops get cookies in the first place step one. step one take a step back to get your foot exact maybe you already Wait have the cookies maybe what do you mean step one at least when it comes down to it we're being told that we're gonna get some defenestration action going for late but so we may have second. cookies if mom actually Wait, lets us have them it's a completely backwards. separate so thing it's the 50th. and i doubt it would work in a location up. that you're playing 
that it would work in a localization that you're playing. Oh yeah, because I'm playing in English, so... If we're going to need a specific thing, which I would assume is Japanese... I'm not sure what the original language for this game is. Hmm. Yeah, since we're playing it in the improved English translation, okay. I'm not 100% certain if we're going to miss bit. anything obvious. You can't just repeat a phrase without changing at least one word. I guess that's People also a secondary like thing. That. There is at least an improved English translation as well as the original English translation. I'm not sure if that's going to make a difference. You make it sound like it's my fault. Damn, really? Hell yes. I carefully move my foot backward, looking carefully into the dense grass. We are also the one who brought up the 50 step thing. So it kind of feels like we're being rude, but... As I but... enter the store, I turn to the first person I see. Hello, can I... Oh, we got O. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Apparently the game's Russian? Ah. Oh. Okay. Excuse me, what? Oh. How would an English, Russian to English translation go? Just Jason. About the notorious bag of milk. There's no phrase carton of milk in Russian. It's called a packet of milk. Which strains like to English as bag of milk. I guess that partly makes sense. Just because bag of milk is only super common in Canada. Done. So it's going to be a little bit weird for a lot of people. To just have a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. But at least the joke works better. With having a bag of milk inside a bag for milk. Excuse me. What? Oh. Oh. Excuse me. What? Although I am liking the silhouette on this and the two-faced nature of it. Oh. Excuse me. What? Although, what does this represent for her them? Oh. Excuse me. What? Oh. Oh. Excuse me. What? Oh. What? Oh. oh. What's he trying to tell you? What is he trying to tell you? That he probably doesn't work here? He's trying to scare me. But how does he know that I'm terrified by the letter? It's common here too. Also in Israel, India, Latin America, former USSR. Oh, is bag milk common over there too? I guess it's just an American thing. And most of the people I end up talking to are just on the American side. What? I have a frightening image when I picture it in my head. I can show you. Explaining won't be enough. But keep in mind that it'll cost me a dozen nerve cells. But Canadians are alone in bagged milk? Apparently not. It's at least common enough that the rest of the world can get it. So that's always nice. Something like that. That eye jump scare is funky, by the way. So, I'll just continue to ignore his question. We have both bagged, or boxed, and sachet milk? What? Isa, what do you mean by sachet milk? Oh. What? Oh. What? Oh. W-H-A-T? Oh. I gather <laughs> oh. all my will into a fist. Oh. We just punch them? Oh. Yeah, I guess we just go ahead and sock them one. My interlocutor shook and crawled away. It's called a satchet. Satchel? You just, just repeated after him. And it and worked? It wor Wait. I said he crawled away. Did he... A bag really sounds like a away? grocery bags? I mean, I didn't even look in his direction. Yeah, all US people playing this assume it's Canadian and made some reference to that in the Steam name. <laughs> well, that's a bit of an awkward point. I figured it wasn't a Canadian game just because it needs an English translation, as far as I can tell. But I found it interesting that it was named that. Just now. Sachet, I believe, is pronunciation. Bag sounds like a grocery bag. Sachet. Sachet. You're just trying to distract Definitely me. Definitely don't hear the word too often, but thank you, Nan. But I know that my words were shown on the screen. 
other aware. I'm standing by the shelves. On the rack there are bags of milk. We both stand. And the milk lies. Or maybe. Also, they all read the line, Hey, I'm walking here, with that certain annotation. <laughs> I mean, it's a common enough phrasing, so... They're pretty much always gonna have it. To buy milk. Right here? Um, I guess something like not here. We didn't do this last time, but I am curious to not actually here. get the be helpful ending. I guess the first sentence. And you, as if out of spite, didn't pause before the second one. You want to rob me of my little victories. I mean, we don't want to rob you I of them, and but... I reach out to take the milk. Or rather, the bag with the milk inside. <laughs> or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag. Or there rather, has to be something to this girl. Inside a bag of milk. But there is a, sec a sequel to this as well, rather, so maybe we'll find out more in the sequel. Inside a bag of milk inside a bag. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside. <laughs> 15 minutes before the store closes. Yeah, I we should probably get them focused, shouldn't we? Visual novels. And by the way, the numbers are written there in full, with letters. Are visual novels worse than books? But there the authors are not lazy, so don't get lazy. I haven't either. actually noticed any numbers visually yet. Not anymore, so watch your mouth. Hee <laughs> hee. Anyway. Hurry up, I'll get I'm it at home. Let's be a helpful person. Hello. See, can I G get some <laughs> e milk, please? Or rather, e -e. <laughs> look at you staring at us. You have it. H. Give. I put a weighty bag on the register. Of course, not just the bag, but the milk. Hi. Can I? Can I have it? No. Please. No. But please. <laughs> Mom will throw me out of the window Come if on. I get back without Pull out the money. N -O -O -O. But, why not? Give more. But I don't have anything else. What? Eh? We didn't actually do these last time, but that does feel very mean. Haha, <laughs> really? What would I do without you? I take a crumpled bill out of my pocket and hand it of to the cashier. Of course she's aware. She imagines herself as a hero of a visual novel to make it easier to buy the milk. He starts to carefully examine Fair. With the way that her headspace seems to be, that it would at least help her to he focus he on it and, it and it actually work through it enough. Although, imagining everybody else's monsters is a little bit funky. Thank you. Goodbye. And the truck is a bear. I'm still kind of trying to figure out that one. I street past a gas station. A bag of milk unpleasantly tugs at my hand, reminding me of the days when I was in physical therapy. By the way, they gave me a bag at the checkout, so now I'm carrying a bag of milk in another bag. Whoa. Don't think anything of it. I just love the pyramidal structure of verbal constructions. Thank you. That's also probably part of the reason. If they do actually like writing, it's easier to imagine themselves within a period of writing to actually get the through gas things. Station is getting closer. Even if these are a little bit too much for her at the time. Thank you for your interest. I feel like a mile long bar of ice cream. As if I'd tell you. And I think this part's relatively fine. Oh no, but you can I fuck did. it up here. Well, look. The ratio of water to milk in the volume of air occupied by me is about 30 to 1. And yet, ice cream is not the best. Mm. Unless you want to drink more than eat. Anyway, the road from the store to the gas station is a stick, and the road from the gas station to home is ice cream. Fair. During today's walk, my body has been to every part of this path. Correct. Simple math. Yeah, I, I mean, she's relatively on point. Asphalt grains petrol stain. I'm trying to keep my balance. And how do people move over something as uneven as the city plane? Gently. Wait, the city heel, plane? To. I count in my mind every oh, meter of the path. Phrasing wise, that still makes sense, I yeah. I even close my eyes for more concentration. Although this is a problem. You really do not want to be closing your eyes when you're walking in the middle of the night. Which is why helpful 
big brother question mark is I here to help consciously take a sharp step to the side at the same moment a huge bear rushes past me with a wild screech hey i'm walking here i cast a reproachful glance at the swiftly departing giant i still love the idea it's that she just eyes. sees in trucks turn, as bears look at me with mockery that'd be a fun world to Did live you in see that how brazen it was a truck oh, really although if you think about it are there bears with eyes on the back of their heads i mean there could be come on are you saying someone would seriously want to kill an innocent girl carrying a bag of milk? And again, yes, very much so. <laughs> hmm. Would that technically be mean? Just to immediately say you're sick? It may actually let us figure out what's going on here, but it is technically mean. Sorry, Frank, we're gonna have to give you up here, just You're in case sick. we fuck this up. HH. You just had to say it, didn't you? Okay, no introspection. My journey continues. If you think about it, the road from the store has one interesting property. It adjusts to me in the most bizarre ways. So far, yeah, considering you've seen all the shopkeepers and pedestrians as aliens for the most part when i am in a hurry all the traffic lights turn off helpfully when i feel like crying a cloud appears over me and pours rain streams that hide my tears mm. right now i can feel a cloud slowly gathering over the top of my head i'm sad mm. are you sure this is really happening oh we don't have a choice actually do we what else could it be I'm pretty sure the last time we went through this, confirming that their world is fake didn't end very well. You know what? What? Since I'm a character in a visual novel, I want to talk to whoever is reading this right now. Oh, that's not good. Original English is much more confusing. There's a lot of odd word choice, downright errors, and hiccups. It was made by the dev back in 2020 when he thought that most likely non-English speakers can even hear about the game. <laughs> well, I guess happy accident, but a regular English speakers found this game, so that's always good. If you say so, I forcefully squeeze my head with my hands and place a thought block. Okay. Out of the corner of my eye I notice a small bench. The perfect place for cliched visual novel mod. I move closer, place a noticeably weighted bag of milk next to it, and raise my head to the sky. Okay, that's fair. That's a good way to talk to us. Oh, hey, it's the shot I used for the background of the thumbnail. <laughs> Listen. That's actually a good way to do the sky. I'm a little embarrassed. Haha. Ha. I realize that I'm going crazy. The medications are becoming less and less effective. So, mm. ultimately, things will happen painlessly, I hope. There's the timing. <laughs> and then we press that one. There we go. Now we're shiny, and now we look even more uncomfortable compared to before. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh wait, we have a text box. Oops. Really? I must be nothing like the model protagonist at all, huh? Been a while since PS2? Yeah, I finally got my shaders actually working again, so... I figured honest, I can put that back up, I haven't read many just so that way novels. people can have another thousand point thing to burn. Sometimes I regret it, because now it costs <laughs> me a lot of effort just to <laughs> Look, I fat fingered the R. Words. Hmm. By the way, what would this be then? If you don't mind, I'd rather not name my diagnoses. That's fair. Admittedly, people are going to be trying to figure it out as we're talking through this, anyways. Let at least you be the one who sees me for who I am. Yeah, that's fair. Even though I made you up, don't take that away from me. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. We'll at least be try to be nice too this much. too much. How stupid does this all seem? 
From the very beginning you've been following me, reading my delusional thoughts, hearing my silly conversations. Yeah. I must seem crazy and weird to you. It does seem like something is going on in your head, yeah. Haha. Ha. Not trying to be rude about it, but... It seems what like it someone's like to trying to help you, but your family eyes. sucks. Ever since, ahem, something happened, all I see is red. Red blood, everywhere. Hmm. No, don't worry about me, I got used to it a long time ago. Admittedly, I'd even forgotten what other colors look like. Oh, that just sucks. Although, what in the world would cause you to only see red? I'm not actually sure. I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to colorblindness, but... I'd imagine there's something that could remove all pigments but red and maybe fragments of the others. Come on, haha. Or at least magenta and all the others. Those monsters from the store, they didn't scare me at all. After all, I know they won't hurt me. No, because they're probably Sometimes regular I think that people. They themselves are afraid of me. That's also possible. Can you imagine that? By the way, if you want to ask me what happened, please don't. Don't worry, I don't have the text box to do that. Promise. Really? Of course, you couldn't help but ask. In the end, I'm just talking to myself. Hmm. Sooner or later I would have brought it up. I've been typing, yes. Does my voice not actually hit her? I guess that would make sense if she's just imagining us there. So you're really that interested in what happened to me? I mean, everyone would be. You said you didn't want to get into it, though. I won't waste time. What am I looking at here? What do you see? Uh, that's a good fucking question. Uh, I'm not sure what I see. It kind of looks like there's a body here, but... I'm not sure if this would be, like, a bike accident? A motorcycle accident? Accident? Anyway. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> a dragon shooting flames from the mouth. Sadly, it kind of felt like we only had, like, eight characters to work with, so... This is my dad. Oh. Some of his parts, at least. Oh, I was partly right then. That is just a gigantic blood stain, and the father is just... Actually... Oh, wait, no, I see it now. So, this is the arm. This is holding a bag of milk. This would be his body, the arm stump, and possibly the head? His other arm is still attached, but it looks like his other arm got ripped off when he was out to get milk. Oh no. Is this why we're getting PTSD off this? Oh, that's not good. We do have a very difficult family. But despite all the problems, I never would have thought that your dad would have his arm lopped off? Sorry, I shouldn't have raised my voice. I'm never buying milk ever again. Anyway, he jumped out the window and died. Oh. With the bag of milk. Huh. This is my last memory. Is mom, then, like, that abusive? Because it seems like mom has a... Oh, wait, they made the defenestration joke earlier. I'm afraid to ask, what happens if you type murder in that? <laughs> Oh no, I might have to try that. Strange, very strange. Today is the first time I've ever been able to buy something in a store without a major incident. Well, I guess if you type murder or suicide, that's still within the actual allowable word limit. Course, the medicine helped me, however. I think it's more your merit. Well, I mean, I'm glad we can help, at least a I little bit. Thinking, we mustn't screw up in front of the reader, or oh my god. What will he think? Haha. Ha. I don't know why I decided to become a visual novel character for the sake of going to mm. the store today, but it clearly paid off. It did help. You at least got Thank milk. You. You're welcome. By the way, 
Only unique answers here are body and corpse. She will say an extra line, correct? Oh, okay. Thank you for confirming that, Twisted. It seems to me that there are some boundaries in our communication. There seems to be a couple, yes. That's how I like it. Wait, what? Ha ha. Wait, she can remove that? <laughs> and yet, I've been so sad lately. I mean, that's fair. You kind of went through a lot as far as I can tell. I've been thinking more and more about what my life has become. Ever since my dad. Well, you know. Day after day, it's the same thing. I've tried so many medications that I hardly feel any difference between them anymore. Hmm. That can happen. At least from what I recall, because I know when I was on the medication I was on, it did kind of start loosening itself after a bit, and that's kind of why I just cold turkeyed it and fixed, not fixed, but maintained the problem it was trying to fix. As long as they help keep and me yeah, happy, admittedly, that I'm is happy. a bit too real. Uh -huh. Medication has really weird limits when it comes to interacting with the human body, and sometimes it can do that, which is kind of not great, but that's just how the human body works. It'll just acclimate to what's coming into the body and just not use it for anything, or but you know use what? it elsewhere because it finds better uses for it. Or, not better, but uses for the body instead of what it's supposed to be doing. Today is a special day because I have you. Yay, we helped. There's so much I want to tell you. You can't even IMA. You... Uh... It actually stopped her. Uh... Why do we have that text option? That was very rude of... I don't want to click that. This is a nice conversation. That was very rude. Oh no. I'm not going to pressure you, I'm just advising you to go home. I'm not going to pressure you. I'm just advising you to go home. I understand. Okay, so she's no longer in thought bubble mode. Was that the... brother well, question mark? Dear reader, shall we go? Does that put up the box again? Why is there a hole? When I get to my floor, I hang over the railing. Oh god. Repeating this action every day, like a ritual, I stopped being afraid of heights altogether. A few minutes ago, the effects of the medicine finally wore off, so I just enjoy the blissful silence. When I am under the influence of drugs, terrible and unpleasant melodies sound in my head. Mm. Mixing with the sounds of the world around me, they create a terrible dissonance in my head. What the hell is that medicine, and what is it doing to you? I turn around and go to my apartment. And is that helping with the PTSD question mark? That's mildly... Oh, God. Hi. Did you bring the milk? Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi, Mom. Yeah, that is Mom. Okay. So, obviously, we view Mom as a monster. Oh, that's unsettling. Did you bring the milk? Yes, we did bring the milk. What is with the warble on her text? Yes, Mom. Did your new medicine help? Okay, so she does say more. Yes, Mom. And we're uncomfortably lying to her. She had to have killed Go the dad, her. right? Yes, Mom. We said yes, we'll go to bed. Milk bot. Yay, we've 100% achieved this. Cool. It was you. You were sent away by a thought block and made your way back while she was talking to herself, delirious, imagining the reader pretending it's a fourth wall. There was none. You were sent away by a thought block and made your way back. So, like, the player character versus the actual reader. Okay, yeah, I can kind of see that. Cool. 
another platinum on Steam. Too big brain for me. I mean, it's psych horror stuff, Aiden, so it just kind of takes thinking it out for a while or having another help you out with the translation when it comes down to it. But yeah, that's fun. Uh, just to double check, though, I want to see if the game will kind of shoot you Write in the foot for going quickly. And... Okay, I wasn't I sure if there the would be any helpful thing. Speech. Like, oh, Frank was helpful last time, sure. It's been... I'm good. I... There are... So... I take... Help... Crap... Nine... So... Help... Uh, so far, it doesn't seem to be shooting you in the face for... Spamming through My right it. Foot is frozen in the air. H, how do even the best translation still a translation, but more on that in the sequel. I, I'm translation ready to seems burst good. Into tears. The translation does seem fairly good overall. It kind of just feels more like you're being left out on details to pros prospect. I think prospect is the right word. Just to try and figure out what's going on so far. And yeah, kind of that point where the awkwardness is kind of meant to be intentional. Because uh, of the fact that step Mother one. Dearest is seen Wait as a, a monster. Minute. Father... You mean step one. Father quote-unquote jumped out the window with milk in his hand? That does not seem like an S word. That seems like an M word. <laughs> I can... So something I does seem just door, weird with the I mom. To the first person I help. Oh. Excuse. Oh. Ex ex oh. Actually, the O also has that same warble that mom seems to have. Ex oh. Excuse. Oh. Excuse. So whoever this is might be partially related to it as well, which isn't exactly a great sign. I have a... I... <sighs> God, that's uncomfortable. Something like that. So It just, just fills your mind whenever that question. pops on screen, because you're already stuck in a 4x3 window for this. What? Oh. 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 Double e oh. I gather... Oh. 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 My interlocutor shook and crawled away. <laughs> That's how she sees her. We're dealing with a very unrelatable narrator here. You. And You're not wrong, Twisted. More often. Wait. I said he crawled away. Did he? <laughs> Good really luck, dude. Away? I gotta go hunt ghosts. Enjoy I, your phasmophobia, I Aiden. Look in his direction. <laughs> Just now. You're just trying, but I. We're probably gonna move over to the I'm second game shortly. On the rack, there because are bags I of don't milk. think there's we much more we need to do with this one. Um, After work, I'll be lurking. All right, sounds good, Ezo. I guess. Best of luck you, with your work. I saw, or rather, or. I'm... Oh, nice. We actually got this Hello. to go an hour. See, can I G get some milk? Yeah, Please. you can try mean answers at the cashier. Yeah. I was thinking mean answer at the cashier and then trying to deny talking to the fourth wall voice. Those were really the only things that we missed so far. You but if we get mean answers here and she just kicks us for not being nice, Age. we've both condemned Frank to an unhelpful existence. I put a weight... And then we can't really get to it. Please, no, but please, but give, but I. What? Hey. You are. Both of those honestly seem mean. So why did they give you us are... two mean options for this? You are. W Y are you telling me this? Oh. 
We can backpedal from your pathetic. Interesting. I want you to die even more than Mom, though she doesn't even see you as a living creature. <laughs> to her, you're just a moat of dust that flies around the room aimlessly. Wow, that is seething. And then what are you talking about? So you can backpedal from pathetic, which is interesting. I, I will pretend that I didn't hear that. Oh, it actually backpedals to the main menu. They hate W Y. For oh no, different reason. You're stupid and worthless. You're not even capable to go to the store to get milk. I hope mom throws you out the window though. Even in flight, you'll think it's just a fun ride. Wow. That's rude. I will pretend that I didn't hear that. So then... W Nothing. Okay, so you eventually have to pay for the milk anyways. For the milk. So that's at least good, but wow, that is incredibly fucking awful. Haha, uh -huh. really? What would I do without... I take a crumpled bill out of my pocket and hand it. He starts to carefully examine it. I just tuned in. I'm guessing milk bag is a euphemism for big sloppy feminine parts. No, actually. Omega, this time the milk bag represents trauma from your father jumping out a window. It took about two days before he nodded contentedly and put it in the cash register. surprisingly loud. But thank you for the hydration, Omega. Sadly don't have milk on hand just because it's warm as fuck today, but... Make sure to at least get some oil, just to make sure we at least catch up with that. Thank you. Goodbye. Ow. Oh, that bag of milk. I walked down a familiar <laughs> street past a gas station. Not quite a the same, but don't think the gas. At you're just a weirdo. We technically didn't do this either. Hey, there we go. Looks like Frank doesn't help me at all. Also, this is partly why they want you to write your name, just so that way they can write it out on the game over screen. I guess I'll try something else next time. Cool, though. Write down your name. It's actually a pretty fun way to actually deal with the whole player character thing. So let's see. Three mean options, and she's just going to change her medication. Yeah. So you basically try to run through the run, being as nice to her as possible as part of the player character. Then she actively wants to talk to the reader behind the screen. So that's always fun. But cool, we got the whole three achievements tied to that. Look at us go. We are true gamers and experiencing depression at the fastest speed possible. And I guess it has technically been long enough, so why don't we just flip this back to regular for now. Dude. And then we can move on to milk outside a bag of milk, outside a bag of milk. Which has 10 achievements, so that's going to be a little longer. Oh, there's someone else actually playing this right now. Well, that's fun. As soon as you choose the language, the intro will start. Okie doke, then. Let's make sure that I have this showing. Cool. Yeah, everybody ready for milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk? And be a bit loud, so you might want to lower it a bit. Good point. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not ready. Sorry, Izo. We're here to experience depression and sadness. You're going to have to be ready. Oh, I guess seizure warning as well. I kind of forgot about that one. Don't believe we have an option to turn that off either, so hopefully it's not super rough. Okay, so counting the steps, like we got in the first bit. I 
I guess this is just recapping what have happened in the first game. And yeah, this is solid animation, actually. Kind of wondering who they got to get this. Or who they got to animate this. I did not see what the words for were for that. Oh dear. Okay, so no one is physically with her, so that confirms the fact that there was a player character being her. Oh, excuse me, what? Thank you. And this is her standing on the balcony or just on the roadway? Won't take much time. Akai. What do you see? What do you see with your eyes clouded with hate? Are you sure? Anyway, it's... Okay. This is our apartment building. I'm assuming she's going to count the steps on her way up. That door is about as big as she is. Huh. She looks incredibly dead. Yes, Mom. Oh, God. A milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. <laughs> what do you see with your special eyes, my brand? <laughs> and welcome in, Mitchy. Hopefully your night's going well. Uh, should mention for this case, Mitchy, this game has a lot of points on depression and PTSD. So I want to let you know going into that. New game. Let's see what happens if we can find milk outside of the bag of milk. Oof. Yeah, girl's haunted by her demons. I understand that. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceilings. <laughs> Wait, is this about crying over spilled milk? Because no one ever really did that. Oh, no, Omega. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best stream safe way to really summarize what we went through for the first hour. Uh, the girl that we're playing as has some mental conditions relating to the potential suicide or potential murder of her father. It honestly feels more like a murder considering his arm was chopped off. Like it felt way too clean and that shouldn't have happened with how the death was. But she basically saw her father die. The mother is seen as a monster, so it's mildly implied that she did it. And her being a fairly young girl is experiencing both the trauma and the mental fortitude having to deal with that. ETS girl has to buy milk for her elders, mom. That does sum it up a bit quicker. Thank you, Iso. <laughs> One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. Oh, this is directly after. Okay. The shadows are at least following me on my way back to bed, so that's good. I walk past the kitchen on my way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. So it's a life sucks simulation. Glad to see there's an audience for this genre. Oh, definitely. And interestingly enough, there were two people. There was another streamer playing this right now too. Just kind of fun. It is a good October game. I'm just surprised to actually see someone streaming it. Oh, we're running. I break into a run and dash towards the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I just don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away the annoying pursuers. But then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door down. Oh, 
Boy, your mom already doesn't like you. You do not want to break the door down. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 I won't. Don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thoughts when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. Oh, we get... Oh, God. Eyes again. Hi. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside, but there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. <laughs> Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I am so sorry. Admittedly, yeah, we did kind of bring it into a possible death trap, so whoops. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk towards my room through a narrow corridor. Hi, Mom. I meet a familiar formless creature, oh god, at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body, like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling, I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. Hi, Mom. <laughs> After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move! The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all the pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. Oh, Jesus, Mom. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of a tightly sprung sinews. But then, the claw injects its venom and- oh. Wait, is that the medication she has? Yeah, no wonder it hurts. You're probably getting injected with something right now. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingertips- or my fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control of my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time. But... Why? Why do I feel so warm? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. So she's vomiting from whatever she's getting injected with? Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Brilliant splashes fly- or bright- why did I say brilliant? Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory, so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need- a new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. That's not an instant game. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I... Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Wow. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I don't really plan on yelling because it's late, but you get the gist. No text-to-speech for this one, though. I'm assuming by what you said before, Twisted, the text-to-speech is new for the first game. 
And we get full color visuals within the actual game instead of a cutscene, so that's always nice. And I still drink cheese. I would not recommend drinking cheese, Omega. It doesn't tend to go down very well, and the few liquid forms of cheese that we have don't exactly like going down throats. They tend to scream a little bit, and it tends to not end very well when you're in a restaurant. I finally get to my room. I'm just so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel pretty comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Doesn't seem like we have much in the background. But it does feel like we've got some floating things back there. Also, that seems to be reflected in the paper. <laughs> Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I, yeah, I get what you feel. <laughs> Twitching limbs, thick milky foam, someone trying to hold head. Oh, right. Seizures. At least I'm pretty sure seizures. Seizures in an EpiPen? Oh. Is her lactose... In Is she lactose intolerant that bad? Oh no. That does not help with everything that's going on. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slip away. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing's left and now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any use need for it. Fair. Still good to go through the rituals. Oh boy. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Nah, she was too agitated. Mom saw that and tried to help. At least for me, that seemed logical. True. To me, it does feel like an allergic reaction. Or just a seizure from whatever the PTSD from the current events is doing to her. I'd have to dig a little bit deeper. But we may find out a little bit more as we're going on. But the fact that she's got that many pills is very concerning. Now I want to have a better look at it. To twirl it between my fingers and to chew on it. <laughs> I'd do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I still can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Usually liquid pills aren't openable. But that's fine, I might be missing out on a few of them. He'll fly straight to the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. Although, she confirmed in the first game that she can only see red. So that's not super helpful if she's just naming all of her pills red. Because that's the only color she sees. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's a fake sleep. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at that. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides and I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. God, I wish that could happen to me. Hey. My hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey! My head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey! My heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey! My stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey! My eyes don't hurt anymore. 
How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I just need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She's just going to scold me. <laughs> and she's sure I'm already sleeping anyways. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll just think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder, who's going to be my conversation partner? That's a good question. It seems like you only have your mom and the player character. Oh. Hey. I guess we can talk to her. Or at least the player can talk to her. Also, that's a really good sprite. That is very clean. Hey, a long time no see. Interesting. So we get these choices right away. Good to know. Um, let's just try to do what we did last time and try to be nice. Let's just see where that takes us. Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. Meet once per day sure sounds like dosage. Oh, definitely. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? That's not true. You really need to go to bed. She does look, like, super tired. <laughs> no, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now. Alright? I'll just stay quiet until the mist... Medicine's effect wears off, how about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> what a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you. At all. Hmm? I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything, and you... You only watch and agonize over your uselessness. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. What made you so happy? And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple of hours ago? <laughs> I don't... I do not know what you mean. S oh. We're already on kind of a bad pathway, aren't we? <laughs> Nuh-uh. I still don't understand. Whatever, unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. I don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots? Yeah. Well, let's just see how long he can last. We'll see, yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Come on, say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling onto my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Okay, we picked a wrong choice. Noted. Hey, at least I tried. Just go wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. Didn't she just do that, though? Me, she was just in there. Ooh. We got visual updates already. That's bad. <laughs> I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks of the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bares her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that really doesn't help. It would have helped me even if I sunk into the floor. Or it wouldn't have helped even if I sunk into the floor. I start counting in my mind, two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better, but my head is just splitting apart now. You're mocking me, right? I'm obligated to ask you this at least a couple of times per session. Oh, we're going the therapist route. Okay. Session. Huh? I'm fine. 
No, you're not. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready. I was sure I'd be able to change something after all. Or after all, I was able to buy his milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. I guess partly it would make sense if she would have gone to therapy sessions for everything that's going on, and then she was prescribed all the medication. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Uh... Does it even matter? Yes, no, and what do you think? I can't be sure about anything. You don't take me seriously anyway. Then why'd you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. I mean, it's true. The pain did subside for a bit at that time, but now I just feel it triple. It just hurts so bad. Just drink your medication already, or, or I'll stop talking to you. Ooh, that's not good phrasing, game. All the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet my mind still draws a terrifying picture. A lump of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if this makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill in the air and catch it with my mouth. Like a cool kid. And now we are... On the bed, question mark? Nice sweater, by the way. Oh no, lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that'll someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, just waiting for me to lose focus. Are you actually going to scare me with that? You want to talk about it? I mean, option. Let's see. I think it's cultural differences. In native language phrase, it's the same, but there's no suicide connotation to it. Interesting. Okay. Then maybe that was just done to simplify for English. Also, I need to stand up. A little bit too hot in here, so... Ugh, joints are getting a little bit rusty. Ow. There we go. Boy. Well, at least with it being translated into English, they are going to probably push the suicide theming a lot more. With everything that's going on, at least. Just like, you're old enough, you know what to do vibe. Yeah. They definitely have just an extra voice in their head. From the pills, which seems odd. I just want to lie down. I mean, I can let you lie down. That's fine. You're just chilling. She said she was in control. Oof. That's good framing. Okay. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out in the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around, in the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed. Start over. Can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. 
technically that's fine. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? Yeah, I don't mind. Makes it easier for the animator behind this too, to be honest. I don't even have the time to blink for my thoughts. They're fireflies now. Start whirling all over the ceiling in their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe... There we go. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. I mean, we are waiting. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling just make me start losing my patience. Enough! Be gone. Oh, we're back to this view. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. That's gonna summon mom. <laughs> no. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. <laughs> I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? <laughs> Should it? I'm not actually sure in this case. Cockroaches is also cultural. In Russian, there's an expression, they have cockroaches in the head. Meaning he's weird. Okay, yeah, that definitely makes significantly more sense if we're just looking at the Russian perspective. Also phrase, we have our own cockroaches in our heads, meaning something like everyone's weird in their own way. Yeah, that honestly would make more sense. Although, the fact that they give the option for fireflies probably helps with branching out a little bit to everybody else, since no one's... Like, that's not exactly a saying you're going to hear over here in North America. Not commonly, at least. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone, even if, if you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You're surely get better, just believe me. Now, start over. You're at it again. Never mind. And I changed my mind anyways. Please just don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a really hard time without your help. Fine. I raised my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. It can be anywhere. A deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's already so late already, but I can't go to bed now. Can you help me? Please, just tell me you'll help. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What are you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know better than anyone else. That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Can you tell me? Oh, Jesus. Okay, so parental abuse. I mean, yeah, she hates them anyways and doesn't understand the saying. Abstract thinking is usually the first victim of mental issues. Yeah. I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're just so itchy. Why are you crying? <laughs> you don't ask people that. Ooh, her voice is warped. <laughs> my eyes are itchy. Did you drink milk? Did he bring milk? Why is that different? I wonder, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, all my eyelashes, just one after another, 
if I tear out all of my eyelashes, one after another... What have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then... Then, I just have a bath. And then... Here, drink some milk. I think we've learned that milk is bad in this case. First death. I died and I felt something. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> Note to self, do not drink milk. <laughs> Gasping for air, I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. <laughs> About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Uh, if she died already, then... Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. To be honest, I have no idea where to look. Me neither. I guess we'll just have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 no. If I make even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their place, and that's it. Why? Probably a lot of reasons, but I know object permanence kind of helps in certain cases. You trying to come up with a reason right now? No. I don't, and I won't. Alright then, so we just need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Significant deviation from the usual themes of Super Milk Chan? Oh, definitely. We're actually getting more into the introspective of what's going on in her head instead of just her current state of mind. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. <laughs> You know, those games have moments where you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Did you refuse to touch them as well? It wouldn't e wouldn't make it even more interesting. Or it would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And want to know what the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up trying and running away. You want that to happen? You're such a handful. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Ugh. That feels too mean. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Oh, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. Look down. A small bit of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wow. Wowie. There's smoke coming from your clothes. No, I'm not going to imagine her getting on fire. If she's already had her first death, I'm not sure if I want to experience that too. Hi, little firefly. How's it going? I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Come to, Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. Why did I have to specify that? One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Now, I was half actually expecting it to shift to point and click. Oh, it is shifted to point and click. Ooh, her pill bottles are an option. Oh, that's not good. That means I have an active choice as to what part of her psyche I want to try and explore. What about the AC? I look up towards a very high place under my ceiling. 
I can hear a countless number of tiny legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh well. What happened? Fireplace can't be friend with cockroaches. We'd better look elsewhere. Why would cockroaches be there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yeah... They became fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't just disappear like that. So they occupied this place. You understand? I'll pretend I do sound so rude. Uh, but conceptually that does make sense. Because you're not actively trying to observe the AC. You know it just gives you cold and you don't think about how it works. So trying to hide thoughts that you don't want to think about there does make some sense. Can't reselect it. Fair. What about the radio? Oh. There's different songs in here. There's a lot of different songs in here. That sounds like the train station. Oh. Not stuck there. Okay. Also, small marching creatures inside something is a classic hallucination. Oh, definitely. Any minor noise you just imagine is... Oh, new one. You just imagine it's insects within something, just because you can't see them, but you can hear them. <laughs> Ugh, that's a warble. The warbles have never proven to be very helpful for her. And then the angry train station. The milk outside of us, he is four hours long. Chunk of that is radio tracks. <laughs> I might actually have to grab the OST then, because these all sound pretty snazzy. That sounds like a screaming child. That's probably not a good sign. Uh, what about this? Oh, it actually does directional audio. Not many things I've done in this have actually had directional audio. So, uh, I hope headphone users are enjoying the right track actually getting something for this. Okay. Horrible static. That sounds fine. Ah, okay, sound does come back on when you're actually checking stuff. Where is the break core? <laughs> I'm sure it's hidden in there somewhere, Ezo, but I'm not sure if you want me clicking a radio on and off for like three hours. <laughs> What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that's looking straight at a giant fan, and I'd be jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage that's locked in, and the cable. It's like an... It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's just keep searching. What about bag? My school bag, worn down and silly. It's almost screaming of its own uselessness. Wool bag. Okay. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are a also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into sticky, mushy substance. They're adding lines. She's getting worse. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Tell me what's inside your bag. Nothing special, just mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there, and I'm not 
really interested in anything else. Music and someone talking is an old Soviet jingle for the forecast program. Every post user citizen 25 plus year old is going to have a Pavlovian reaction to that. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's always good to include stuff from your culture. It tends to help tie themes in as well, and I'd imagine if this is basing itself within a Russian setting, then I can't imagine it as being the happiest. Yeah, I did. I had a blast. Are you sure you understood my question? I think everything in my life should be done in... should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. Alright, alright. What'd you like most? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright. Not like at home. Is it? Don't rush me. I remember. Well, the beds were also soft, and the food was nice. Wait. This may be a cultural thing. Uh, beds at school? What? By the way, I attended all the classes. The others were always skipped. It was always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. Where the fuck was she? That she had beds. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> this was when she was at the psych ward, wasn't she? That would have beds. And then you would be brought from your cell slash room to a coaching slash review. Oh. I hope it's not that. Yeah. You remember your last day? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago. The tasks were just way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner and just went to our rooms. I guess that day has absolutely no special meaning for you. Hmm, there's probably something there. Like I told you, it was just a normal day. As I look to the side, like I'm obviously not saying something important about it. Is your memory that bad? It is, admittedly. Oh, fine. That day, Dad picked me up from school earlier, explaining to me that I need to grow up. That's a bit different. <laughs> not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there, we had dinner together, and we went to our separate rooms. Satisfied? Ooh. I'm feeling like a bitch, but... Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers did not interfere. That scene was pretty ordinary for them. Who knows what that little brat's done. Then he pushed me into the car and he drove me home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there, we had dinner together, and we went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this further. Okay, I was wondering if I was going to keep pushing. Uh, potential flash warning here, because I have a feeling we're going to hit something. Also, damn, that stare. That's the you're not nice to me stare. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Mom was not home. Again. I hate mom so much. Suddenly, I feel someone's eyes on my back. Knowing that these moments should never be ignored, I turn around. But there's nothing there. Everything that... <laughs> You're annoying, try figuring this one out. Good achievement name. Everything that happened next ev happened after something that led to everything that happened after what had happened. Look at my bag again, light pouring into the room through the window, glints on the middle part. And there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I managed to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It has already happened. Countless times. 
I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. Yeah, that was the day when the first death memory happened. Ow. Oh. Oh no. Okay, so we shouldn't feel sympathy for Dad then? I th That's actually going to answer some questions later, isn't it? Look at your feet. It's barely glowing and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is just really tired. I bend down and pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then it flies up. There you go, buddy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while, it then for a little while, then it goes silent. Why so? I don't think he he's actually the one who choked her. Game looks comfy. Hi, Nano. Welcome in. Uh, just to confirm for realistic and non-jokey reasons, this game is not comfy at all. <laughs> it's more just a feeling when you're critically stressed. Oh. Uh, yeah, the feeling of not being able to breathe over that much stress. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. I suppose that's not bad timing. Uh, 12 8. 12 8. 12 8. 12 8 is Fairy War, isn't it? Yeah, 12 8 is Fairy War. Silly Omega. Getting me to play with the fairies. A different. A different game containing milk? I'm not sure how much milk is actually in Fairy War. Ow. Sorry. Why did it reset my sound settings for Fairy War? <laughs> Ow. There's apparently too many things called Fairy War. No, bad. This game is intriguing. Oh yeah, definitely. When it comes down to the various milk games, they tend to have, or just the milk games in general, they have a lot to go over. Which is partly why I figured we might need to go into a second round for this next week. Just to actually hit everything that goes on. Because hot damn. But so far it definitely feels like a good time. Like, not mood-wise, but... Like, there's enough happening with this girl that we need to just review that it becomes a bit of a problem actually trying to combo it together. There we go. Better finish this quick and return to your milk before it gets sour. Oh, yeah, definitely. Don't worry. We'll try our best with that. Ah, I didn't get it in time. That's fine. Oh, almost. There we go. At the end of the day, it's just a horror game. Would you count the milk games as horror? I know they fall under psych horror, but... Does that considered horror in the grand scheme of things? Since you're just trying to explore someone's mind, if anything. Oh boy. That one's possible to hit. <laughs> Don't try to understand it, just roll with it. Psych horror is horror by death. True. Oh. Damn it. I didn't get the ice off in time. Oof. Never mind.
There we go, that was a good one. <laughs> the mind is a scary place. It really is. Oh, hi Luna. Oh god, those home. Oh boy. That was pretty good. No. <laughs> oh boy. Damn it. Need to get you one of those shaders that make you look 2D. I mean, a shader that makes me look 2D would be handy, but I think that becomes more of a problem, if anything. There we go. Perfect freeze ready. There we go. Never mind. I don't really see them as horror. Psych horror nowadays is just mental ward patient is escaped asylum and chopping everybody <laughs> with a big machete. He also has two personalities. Admittedly, you're not wrong there, Twisted. That's just slasher horror. Also technically true. It is nice when they actually do psych horror properly, though, and Milk seems to be doing that just fine. Because you are dealing with the horrors of a mind, which is dealing with PTSD on a few accounts, at least, from what I can tell. Eh. Damn it. Ow. <laughs> Elora eventually wants to make a model that's 3D, but looks 2D as well. I know you can pull it off pretty convincingly. 2D shaders with stock unity. There's probably some cell shading shaders that I could look into. There's really just options when it comes down to it, right? Because I did a little bit of a slap job when it came down to this one, if only because of the fact I was just finding my tools again and was just trying to make stuff work. But this does at least get me along the line that I wanted to do, which was trying to make it at least look a little bit like Reboot, which was at least the partial goal when it comes down to it. Where's my blue color? There we go. That's a bit better. <laughs> Here's to be a fruit fly in here. That's not good. I don't even have fruit. Well, that should be enough of that for now. Game over, severely wounded. Yeah, no kidding. Cherno getting hit by a fireball is probably a good enough reason for her to have some problems, at least. And then this sound can come back on. Because it's spoopy. The problem is making the outline drawing look good. Oh, I missed something. A traditional 2D shader would require both a cell shading shader as well as an outline drawing shader. And the problem is making the outline drawing look good. Yeah. <laughs> that tends to be the problem when you're trying to make things work, so... No fail there. That's probably something I'll need to look into either way, because I would like to have different shaders than just the default 3D shaders from Vroid. They're not exactly great by any stretch. That didn't actually take category, didn't it? I guess there's more people actually streaming this too. Cool. Uh, let's see, we've clicked on the bag, the fan, we've cycled through the radials a bit, and the AC. So I guess now... That's concerning. Uh, so it's a bunch of boxes 
or bricks? Why would that get tased out of existence? I'm going to have to be the asshole again, aren't I? Oh. You can't actually click on those. Interesting. I don't have to be the asshole. Can't get an infinite loop of sound off of it, though. <laughs> I'm going to assume that might be the last thing we need to click, just for it to actually sync up with whatever the plot's trying to do here. Uh, let's just keep going right to the left, just to keep things mostly organized. This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. There's roughly 18 milk cartons under that sink. Your successful trip in milk inside was the 19th. Oh, yeah. Cartons of milk would make more sense in this case, wouldn't it? Draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? Run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. This is the solace argument for why he won't use potions. <laughs> I can't get the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? <laughs> this is technically a good answer, but not in this case. By what? Ask whom? Can even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy a notebook instead. Hmm. Instead? Do you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of the other? <laughs> then how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. I don't think that's... Whatever. You really lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get close to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. Good sign. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Let's not go there. <laughs> I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. It's a brilliant translation. Wordplay is saved. Yeah. I'd assume with this one, since it just kind of said that there was an English translation, they probably did their best to make sure everything tries to fit in for the second game, at least. Yeah, maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with a headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped, even though the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait just a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look if I just wait a little longer. If I wait... Oh no, don't do that. Come on, me. If she doesn't want to look at the first page of the book. I mean, yes, Aesthetic Dialectic did English improved and translated the second game. Oh. Okay. Well, good on them. They seem to be doing a pretty good job. Oh. Okay, just do it. No way. I know you're lying. No, don't say this to people. No. 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 Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. I imagine it. I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, just don't close your eyes. What did you... 
couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it. I'm scared. Trust me. Trust the voice in your head. The rustling pages grow louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look. Yes, look here into your past traumas. A barely visible light seeps the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. Oh, a firefly. The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world just sinks into perfect silence. But only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings, but it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up, and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing just dies down. Ugh. You good? <laughs> We're running short on time, so let's just keep searching. God, that's still weird. Um, we still got a lot of stuff to check. Oh, another radio, too. <laughs> they really have three radios in here just for you to cycle through the OST for the most part, don't they? Also, Ezo, here's your break core. This is probably the closest you're going to get. Also, I realized directional audio again, so this is left track. Okay, you can't have multiple radios on at the same time. I wasn't sure if left track, right track would have work. I'm sorry, bomb sirens? Interesting. I feel like the effect that this is actually just on left channel is helping these songs out a lot. They come off as significantly more unnerving. Got break core once, where is it? Okay. Well, it's in there somewhere. It's not easy to get out of here. Oh. Okay, so we can potentially vent. Good to know. And what are those? Ah. Those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. Ooh, that's not a good sign. Now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Just forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, so makes sense. She's living in a not-so-great situation so far. What about the sleeping bag bed? This is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Did you fall asleep? Huh? Gently slap my cheeks to return myself to my senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like, like a log at this time, but right now I cannot. <laughs> Let's just keep searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something. 
Nah, my, my thoughts don't have a feature putting to sleep. Yeah, that is proper wording. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. You probably tinkered on those radios, judging from... He's a math and IT kid. Asked for new radios because her old ones were quote-unquote broken, but it's not the radio that's broken. Yeah, she's probably just hearing specific audio tracks based on the radios, probably just based on specific time frames. Oh. Bag is meaningless. Although it is a good touch that the radios all have their own different track lists tied to them. I'd have to probably look at the OST names and just see what the track lists are actually tied to them to see if there's any significance, but they do kind of give us order of ascension and order of closeness, I suppose. Uh, umbrella? The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. I wonder if it's the only thing that defends me against thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that it can... Yeah, it's such a blessing that I can do it without any help. Still, a firefly not gonna hide in a place like that. It'll catch a cold and it'll be unable to fly. You wanna check? Why? I'm sure we're not gonna find anything. We're actually getting denied on a few of these. Uh, what about the plant? Right, insects enjoy pollinating of flowers and stuff like that. Yeah. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves smell of dust and cardboard and death. Those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract the insects. That's a lie. They definitely can. Well, we kind of don't have a choice. Still, you're right. Let's keep looking. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? Yeah, don't worry, we were listening. We get it. Uh, the alarm clock, notes on the shelf, garbage can, her medicine. There's still a lot to go through, holy crap. Uh, laptop? Don't like this music choice. That's concerning. There we go. I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. Ew. Ew, that's not something you want to think about. A bizarre item. I fear it. It's a long and boring story. Yeah, tell me about it. Please. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it here, just because I couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Hmm. Parents encouraging you to use the internet is a little bit funky, but... Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering calculator, 3D modeling... This is where we get that info on her actually being a tech student. So much fun stuff to do. Yeah, I did just have some before entering the web. Oh, she just had a computer before. She didn't have internet until a certain point. Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? I mean, as always, your analogies are pretty good. Okay, I imagined. All right, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Okay. Wonderful. And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives... Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. On one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house and brings you to the pet store. Now, your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours. And the other hamsters look identical to you, too. That means you're all the same. That's a good analogy for the internet. Apart from the fact they were born at that shop. 
You'll ask, what does that indicate? And I'll tell you, nothing at all. I forget what I was talking about. Okay, let's just start over. This time, try to avoid the hamster analogy. <laughs> you know, I'm not at fault here. So, I had a lot of friends online. Ten hundreds of them. Impossible to count. Was she a content creator? Is it impossible, though? I had exactly 317 of them, or Facebook. Although I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into the pet shop. Oh, right. Uh, for my 317 friends, 68 were into gaming, just like me. Good. 131 of them liked drawing, just like me. The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. And when I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Alright? You can split numbers evenly, no problem, but math does not work out like that when it comes to friends. A major conundrum, yeah? I knew, of course, that no real people exist on the web. I mean, true. I also understood that all of my friends die the moment I turn off my laptop. Technically, yes. But I still wasn't even a bit worried. Why? Do you know what computer programs consist of? It's just a combo of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that kind of funny? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend. I don't care whether they know about my existence or not. Anyway, as I was saying, every program has its own algorithm and purpose. It's a mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, you'll be able to protect the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. Honestly, she's still making a good deal of sense. Like, phrasing it in the way of Ompsi is not the best for everybody, but for those who even have a vague understanding of it, it's still flying just fine. You don't need to follow me, just listen. I sit on the floor and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. The only thing reflecting is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just code. Hey. Let me know if you need a break. One day, someone just appeared. From that point on, my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was really good at pretending. At some moment, I let him trick me. Hmm. That's not good. Suddenly, a firefly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I mean, yeah, if she's a comp sci major. I changed my mind. I have no desire to find out what it wants to say. Stops glowing for a moment after that, and it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time, it thinks about the further course of actions, then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's keep going. And what about your story? <laughs> you must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm very sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story. Maybe. You promise? I promise. And if you forget... Then remind me, with a code word, for example. Please forget it, because I won't. Oh no. <laughs> Why did I get an achievement for that? A code word. I'll think of one later. And for now, let's just keep searching for fireflies. I guess just... Oh. Wait, I can just end here? I'm not done yet, though. There's still stuff to find. Oh, wait. If we finish early, there's a possibility that we can just go to bed and then Mom won't try and rip our throats out. Or the visual equivalent as to whatever this game's going to try doing. Interesting that that's there, though. I'm going to assume I'm not going to do everything right with this time, considering I've still got a few things to search, but for shits and giggles, let's just try searching everything and see what the consequence to that is. I doubt it. All the compartments are locked. What if... 
I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows? I'll just... Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Okay, so no. Garbage. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. <laughs> There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Oh, we don't even try and explore that. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling, at least 300 feet off the floor. Damn. You have to go rock climbing? Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like, totally, and I definitely not worried. Not even the tiniest bit, not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, no, you don't. Then act normal. Dude, don't be rude. Maybe that's also, I found all the fireflies, so you don't have to go through everything. But I'm curious. An inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They never get up there. They know about personal hygiene. Note. Your usual notebook pages, just glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's only kind of information. Or it's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you knew them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle relentlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath. I did not find them all. Okay. It takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey, let's keep searching. All right, well, now the rough one, which is the pill bottles. Look at the mound of pills, and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't... That's not good. I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. I'm down. You already fixed that? The ultimate... Oh, wow. No. No, we're not saying that. I'm aware I'm picking some dick options. I'm not picking that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Things could have been worse. Yeah. I have a deep sly. Come closer and extend my hand. Hey, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it, and along with them... A firefly! Yay! After circling above my head a couple times, it finally lands on my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder... I'll straighten my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. So that's technically everything in the room. I Oh no, I missed one. The lights. Whoops. Are you serious? I mean, it's fireflies. Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. Well, only if they're purposely want to lower their self-esteem. Hmm. Okay. Cute little touch. That should be everything, aside from that. Which I'm mildly afraid to click on now that I think... Oh, the alarm clock. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. Fair. It's so late. You tired? You bet I am. Put a theatric yawn and hold my arms to the sides. One, two... Then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. You remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so? 
Like a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Countdown, five minutes. Fine, you have a clock right in front of you, though. Can't look at its hands for too long. First, I feel they start moving in the wrong direction, then they disappear altogether. Okay. So she's got her patterns, at least, which is helpful. Things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. What? Forget it. Did you, do you see the firefly? No. Let's keep searching. Okay. Now, head aside. Is that everything that you can physically click on? Aside from the radio. Plants done. We did that. The mirror reflects the background. Or at the very least, it's expanding the background. Okay, you can't click on those. I think we're good. Well, I mean, we found all the fireflies, from what I can tell. I'm curious if finding all the fireflies is a good idea or not, since some of them seem to be relating to some trauma she's dealing with, but... Technically speaking, it's good to go through your trauma in a controlled environment when it pops up. Hey, you found all of them. Amazing. I guess... I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? You're supposed to be at least partially happy. If I lose something and find it, it's just gonna go on back to the starting point. No changes, a zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? Shouldn't think too much, it hurts you? I mean, I wanna sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? Let the girl sleep! Voice in your voice that I'm projecting into her head. Let her sleep. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. That's rude. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with the silly question? I'm going to sleep. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, at the same time still being me. Ridiculous. Like milk outside of a bag of milk. And yet... And yet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time's running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never, ever... Is that a goodbye, then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. And what's that? I've flirted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine. It's a favor. I... Uh... Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. That's admittedly a mood and completely fair here. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. Pull the Erno reverse card as the voice in her head. Good job, me. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. 
I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad just because the dreams won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Yeah, of course I'll believe. You know, I know, it, I knew it was a joke. Well, anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, then lied down and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looking sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I just started to feel... I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was really scary, you know? Then one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were just hanging over me hissing. It was horrible. And well deserved, I guess? I mean, it felt like I was caught in the biggest lie in the world. Yeah, it felt exactly like that. And after that, I just stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes just stayed here. I guess they liked the place. They always fall on my wake, peeping at me, and I'm kinda scared of them, and can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well, I... Feel too scared. Of course, they're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. And I was trying so hard. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. <laughs> no worries. No one can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea to tell them. <laughs> oh, it's super easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not... And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize we'll just end up wasting time. I mean... No... <laughs> Honestly, having someone read you a bedtime story can just help as having a voice of safety with you. So it's nice that she's reaching out for that. Let's focus on something actually important. She wants to sleep. Fine. Close your eyes. Oh. You won't get it. You're not even trying. Oh, we got the old style, too. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alleyway. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. Oh. Hello. So, the left character is us, with the hat. But... The right is a question. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. Oh god, that's close. You're late. Uh, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, just confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. That's not suspicious at all. Haven't I told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. But what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. What? Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. <laughs> Aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird, constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. <laughs> Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Jessica puts on a cunning smile. I pat my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you, I don't like you. Simply bursts out laughing in reply. 
I do like you, though. And he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. Okay, so we're going to buy milk again with a questionable lad. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. Wait a second. In the end, the trip took a little longer than it should. Uh... I'm not actually sure with that one. 20 MNHYT? After reaching the store's doors, we are greeted by a sign. Can't be tomorrow. And that is Latin lettering. We're closing in 20 minutes. Maybe this is a translation thing. <laughs> what the bright idea to indicate their working hours this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's pretty convenient. You joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's so much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah. And what's your name? None of your business. Ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. <laughs> Let's go. What are you waiting for? The fact that she's still getting led along by him is kind of concerning, though. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. Can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I. Uh. Maybe we should just ask somebody for directions? Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresco lets go of my hand and walks confidently towards one of the few store's customers. That person's standing with her back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hmm. I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. That's where we couldn't get past. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. Oh dear. I, uh... If he's yours, please get him away from me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I grab Triska's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and eyes popped. He's also shaking. That's not a good sign. That is very bad social anxiety, friend. Only when he turns around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I... I just got so scared. He said... What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Ugh. Okay. Can you act normal? So this memory gets imprinted on her. Hmm. Not a good sign. You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand. You're mean. Who, me? Oh, there goes Tresca. Pushes me away and runs off. Okay. So the first game, even though we're following her, seems to match to what Tresca was dealing with while he was at the store. And then the negative commentary was her original thoughts when it came to the situation. And since she's currently stuck in a situation where she's got her own second mental voice. They're combining the stories in that way to keep it running. Eesh. That's a rough situation to be in. Let's see if they actually tell us more about Tresca, though. Edge of my vision, I see the store staffing a new sign on the door. There you are. 
I met Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding where it was. Oh, there's the warbly adult voice. <laughs> Hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that was formed after Tresca. I squeeze through towards him. What happened? He doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. And that's where the translation comes in. You can't see my mouse, neither can I, but the box. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yeah, of course. And the waiting fee? What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Jessica starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son's an arsler, too. But... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote at the cashier of so much higher value than needed, even counting on all the stupid fees, and grab the bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's bad. I forgot about that. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right towards a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickered in his eyes for a brief moment, and then it goes out. You know, he turns away from the path and walks straight towards the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. Tresca. Oh, that's not a good frame. It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. Hey, we got the animated back. We didn't get the full scene there, but... And there's our black sun again. So what is she going to do after all this? Because she was reliving the trauma that I didn't think would happen at first, but apparently... Oh, good night. Oh, the achievements in Russian. That's so rude. <laughs> Jason's probably not in the audience right now, right? Oh, nice, you got a helping hand with this one. Visuals, Ghost Funeral. Okay. Congrats to Ghost Funeral. They did a great job with the visuals on this. Animation. Alina Chrome and Clematista. So they're the ones who did the animated shorts then. Neat. Music and sound design. Nikita Bleep show William Charles Proctor. Dixon has Pacific Ocean, Wumi, and Denobi. Cool. English translation, aesthetic, dialectic, like you mentioned before, Twisted. And they did a good job with the English translation. Special thanks to M. D. Galeran, Noah Liner, Kevin S., Mike H., Selkie, Mondo Bizarro, Crispin, Flirt, Ben M., Beaver, Fading Glimmer, Spence F., Nicholas G., a Russian name I can't pronounce, Ellie, and Murad. Neat. This wasn't kickstarted by chance, was it? Oh, I'm gonna have to start over fresh. Hmm. Still technically I have like an hour left. Let's see. We unlocked half of the achievements. So I've clearly missed stuff still, but we at least got a good chunk of it. I'm going to assume the achievements for this are all secret, right? Yeah, that makes sense. This is kind of a visual novel that'll kind of need it. I guess then we need to try running through this again and see what other choices we can make. I guess it just has continue and is auto-saving throughout the pathway.
just in case the game like crashes or closes. I guess different decisions this time. Let's see what ones I can actually make. But we did get the you're not very helpful bit, so... That was at least a part of it. Running, running, running. We're running through the halls. Running from the shadows. They'll cause us to fall. Oof. Forgot that part was a little unnerving. No living corpse inside. Hi, Mom. Then we get our injections again. We're getting our injection to deal with either the allergic reaction we have to milk or the seizure that's happening because we're gotten it. So either way, mom is technically helping. Hi. Although that does make me wonder if that ending scene is actually the main ending you're supposed to get, considering we got good night, but don't feel warm in my room, even the weird sounds come from outside. And considering one of the achievements is you've experienced your first death, that kind of implies there's more than one for you to find during this. If the day for it, my biggest dream was to sleep all day long. I'm sorry, what was that crunch? There's our pill bottles again. I'm pretty sure there was a choice here. Want to have a better look at it? Twirl it between my fingers and chew on it? Gently press it, the red liquid streams out. We have the pill that lets us sleep better, but we decide not to take it because it's a fake sleep. And then just going through all of our pills for half an hour. Oh yeah, right, we made our own concoction either way. So maybe we don't have a choice there. Right, we get to her room, and then we start getting choices. Now... How advanced would this game be if I just leave it here for a minute? Is the game sadistic enough to give us just ignoring here? By leaving it alone for like five minutes or so? Because I can see that. That'd be a hell of a way to actually get an achievement going and or causing her significantly more stress by not having someone to talk to this entire time. Although it is mildly insistent on it. Ah, welcome in there, Lion. Hopefully your evening's running well. We're actually just going through our second run of this right now, just to see if waiting here for a bit will actually cause anything. But how are things on your side? I'm going to assume to some degree that Twisted is also in the other streams for the Milk games right now. Ow. There we go. That's a bit better. Uh, 
doesn't look like we get an option to ignore this, though. Alright, well, if the game has implied that there's a first death, we may as well see if we can find multiple deaths during this. Long time no see. Uh, last time we were trying to be as nice as possible and finding all the nice options, so what happens if we're rude? I've been a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? No. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. Oh, okay. So no difference there just yet. You do your best to make me feel better? I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, to some degree. I don't need you at all. Hmm? Energetic, and I feel great, which means I can do anything. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, no, we can just go straight for the throat. Interesting. So nothing is affected yet by doing that. Tears streaming down my cheeks. Yeah, that's still pretty normal. Along with my clothes, burning holes in them. Wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. Okay, so being rude so far hasn't helped her exactly, but let's see what happens on bathroom round two. The image that's covering her is different this time. We had a significantly streakier version of the image actually covering her. Shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. Wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. Start counting in my mind. Accurate. And you feel better, because math helps you. Math is a constant and keeps you from wandering. We didn't apologize last time. Keep blaming yourself, but don't ever do it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to... Hmm. Okay. Still nothing new. But we're getting different text boxes, at least, which is handy. That way through a way? Undoubtedly. Oh, this is actually just new. Wouldn't that mean you're getting better? <laughs> Nonsense. Medicine's something you're supposed to take, not toss. Stupid. It's so stupid. Felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. And subsided, but now I feel triple in force. Just drink your medicine already, or I'll stop talking to you. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Reach out for the shelf with my medicine. And then taking all of her pills. With the lovely visuals of the blood trickling down her throat from her pills, she does not have a very good time with this medicine. Worries you so much more than pain. Last last pill in the air like a cool person and catch. Okay. Interesting that us being rude hasn't done anything specific yet, though. It was pretty quick in the first game to just say no, stop being a bastard. But here it almost seems like she's used to it, which is not a great sign. Not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below me. 
It's also possible that the images that are actually being used for the background plated areas do just change from playthrough to playthrough. That could at least be different. Also liking that sweater. Would actually be kind of a nice one to have in the middle of winter. Want to lie down for a bit? Well, I mean, I'm not going to stop you. Lying down is comfy. We didn't do it last time, so I'm just kind of curious, but... What happens if we instill the fear of death in her? Can you stay quiet, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. Okay, different phrasing, but moves on. So now we get back to the 300-foot ceiling with everything stapled to the ceiling, including her dresser. <laughs> Hope to seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off my hand, annoyed, and start over. Imagine the cockroach thing. But she doesn't like cockroaches, so they can be fireflies. Neat. Don't even have time to blink before my thoughts. Start whirling all over the ceiling with their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. Only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment never comes. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Hmm. Did she explode on her thoughts before? Bring to my feet and scream, top of my lungs. Yeah, she did this before. That's still behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. Should I? Yes. What do you want me to do then? I don't know. You're at it again. Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyways. Please don't stay silent for long. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. All the fireflies are gone, though. I do need to find them. Forget about them and go to bed. <laughs> Glance around the room. There are too many places for creatures small as Firefly to hide. They can be anywhere. Deafening rumble. The clock hits midnight. It's so late already, but I just can't go to bed. Can you help me, please? Tell me you'll help. I wonder then if I need to get all the fireflies before that finish searching pops up instead of wasting time on other things. Let's see if I can actually remember. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you. <laughs> Alright, so then we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside of a mountain of junk without moving anything. My oh my. Last time we were visual novel, now we're point and click. The games have moments so you just look at different objects and something inevitable happens. Sounds fun. I mean, if she's gamifying her life, that tends to help overall, but if she's switching from game to game, I'm not 100% certain if that helps, but I suppose it's better than nothing. Ruin, you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Don't be so boring. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. But that actually seemed like a good option. That's not good. 
Hey. Look down. A small ball of light and warmth crawls out from my sweater. There's smoke coming from your clothes. Also, I'm realizing being rude to her did not give us the death reaction we got last time. Interesting. Carefully grab the firefly, it's pleasantly scorching to the touch. Yeah, that's all pretty normal. Our little firefly friends are nearly literal interpretations, so they're fairly hot to the touch. Alright, now do I remember where all the fireflies were? There wasn't one in the fan, there's one in the laptop. There's not one in the AC, because that's where all the cockroaches are. The crack in the wall did not have it before. The backpack... Had a memory, at least. Also, I'm liking the fact that it does just have different backgrounds set up for this. Kind of gives you a nice visual update from playing it over and over again just to try and find everything. Alright, let's see here. So, alarm clock didn't have anything. The dead plant didn't have anything. The scrapbook does. We get the solace explanation as to why she doesn't use her sketchbook all the time. So congrats to her on that. Stool's missing two legs. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? <laughs> Stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. The pages are pure white. Then the gust of wind. And then we be rude and tell her to open her eyes to see her drawings. Notebook is still open in the middle, no drawings, nothing. The pages are still white. Did you? <laughs> this so far still seems about the same. So that gets the sketchbook out of the way. Next would be the laptop, which had one. Because she's talking about her internet friends and her internet life. And just the general comparison to internet friends helping her out in the past. Which is fair, you can develop a good amount of relationships over the internet. Try to avoid the hamster analogies. Honestly, the hamster analogies still work when you're talking about the internet. General notes about friendship. Hey, let me know if you need a break. Hey, there's Cyan. Welcome in. I do hope the evening's running well for you so far. We're just trying to explore this game a little bit just to see if I can find the rest of it. But how are things going on your side? We 
If you do everything right, I'll finish my story. Okay, so that's two of the fireflies out of the way. The vent doesn't have one. The AC does not have one. The fan had an allegory, allegory for one. Uh, the hygiene wasn't needed, that, the plant, the alarm clock, the notes on the wall, I think. Looking forward to just resting today. <laughs> Been burnout with work this week. That's understandable. Does that mean that you're at least at the regular end of your work week for now? Hope you're having a nice day today. Uh, so far, I'd say it's gone all right. We are playing psych horror slash depression simulators, but I'm usually fine with those themes. Now, I know it can hit other people a bit harder, but just because of the way my mind works, and I'm not sure if that's a weird topic to think about, it doesn't really affect me that much. But it's good to hear that you're actually relaxing. Because I know with a busy taco alien, you do kind of need to spend some time relaxing, otherwise you're going to have to worry about your exoskeleton cracking. And we definitely don't want that to happen. Ow. Or my joints rusting over. I gotta have to be careful with the sudden heat wave that we get hit by. Takes off in a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like year. Well, I say heat wave. It's just getting closer to 30 degrees Celsius again, which for October is weird. Okay, so we found three fireflies. And we can technically stop here. We didn't stop early last time, so I'm kind of curious. What happens if we finish searching early? I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy. That's new because we didn't grab all of them. If I lose something and find it, I'm just going to be back at the starting point. No changes. And happiness is about being positive, right? Hmm. Right, we did have a choice here about the balcony, didn't we? That is weird, but that's an all-year temperature here. I'm mildly glad, then, that I'm here, and I don't mean any misjudgments on this case, but I prefer minus 20 Celsius, so when we get up to 30 Celsius, that's kind of a problem for me. Oh, we do get her to the balcony. We did not get this last time. Ooh, that's a funky visual. Okay. My apartment building looks like a bottomless cooking pot. Thank you for the hydrate. But instead of soot, it was hundreds of concrete and metal boxes on its walls. There are lights in the windows. There are muffled voices coming from inside. The howling wind spirals up and splits into hundreds of independent streams. Seems like it wants to be heard by every person living here. I like how Jude's heat wave sounds like autumn for me, but my cold snaps like a summer breeze for him. Oh, probably, yeah. Because do keep in mind that I probably get significantly colder temperatures than you do. My cold saps are like hell for you. Oh god, we're going up towards the eye. I could see the horizon from my window before, and the building grew for miles in both directions. I guess at some point it circled around and closed in on itself. Nothing unusual about that. The eye is staring at us. I mean, I definitely feel. Sometimes it's more than enough. 
Of course. Moreover, I'm completely terrified. Was it that obvious? I mean, you're looking in every direction, but not up. Ah, that. I already told you, hadn't I? Ah, uh, you know, small stuff. And small stuff make you terrified? It's hard to explain. I climb up the metal railing and let my legs hang down. I sneak short glances at the abyss from time to time. It replies with angry, cold breath. Oh, right, before I continue reading. Uh, Cyan, this game does have some content warnings on it. Uh, depression, suicide, murder, uh, PTSD, and potential schizophrenia. So I guess just keep that in mind. This game is technically pretty sad. Sometimes I feel like the whole world pretends to be crazy. As if it's trying to make me believe in something that doesn't exist. Weird, isn't it? Yes, but at the same time, it makes me a little bit happy. Everything around me is created for my sake, to deceive, trick, and confuse me. If that's true, I guess I'm not so crazy myself after all. You believing in this is definition of craziness? Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Another gust of wind blasts up against the pot's walls, smashing the glass to dust and blowing the concrete crust. I, on the other hand, feel a gentle breeze that only ruffles my hair. <laughs> Still haven't come up with a code word. You're the one to remember your promise. You don't need a code word. I don't like it when this happens. I want to remember certain things only when I want to. Nonetheless, you made the promise. And I'll keep it, but you need to keep in mind that from this moment on, every word will bring me pain. I bend down and imagine falling into the abyss. I have exactly two minutes before I meet my end. Good timing. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Well, here's the other death scene, I guess. Do we actually get her conscious mind during this? I had a friend online. My best friend, even. Even though the combo of letters he used instead of his name wasn't really that cool. Well, the combination of pixels he had instead of his photo was also boring and unattractive. This is really strange and wrong, breaking the rules of being online. How was he doing that? Maybe his code was a few lines short? I mean, I don't get what you mean. I could tell you about those rules. You can't find them anywhere, but I'm pretty smart, so I figured them out myself. <laughs> Although, I'm not sure if I should divulge them. Why? When I try to say what I think out loud, I tend to make mistakes. If I make just a single one, everything that comes after con contradicts my thoughts. And I end up with the opposite position. And I don't want that. According to that logic, it'd be better for you to keep your mouth shut forever. Yeah, that's my dream. I should not be excited while saying that. Keep my mouth shut, never get up from bed, never see or hear anything. Just dream on and on. Why is everything so terrible? Don't get distracted, so what was that about your friend? My friend? Oh, yeah. He was brazen enough to... Come on. He somehow made me believe that he was real. He kept describing someone else's life to me in detail, as if it was him. And he expected me to do the same. And then I told him everything about myself, without hiding a single thing. I grit my teeth, the wind whips my face without mercy, it slices my skin in uneven stripes as if it's a piece of thin cloth. He knew more about me than anyone else in the world. You know what he did? Yes. <laughs> Sending an army of bots to harass me was probably fun. And what's most important, it was a win-win situation. They spawn here and there, simple bits of code that are effortless to run. No wonder the algorithm assigns that pattern more often than the others from the list. Text and video generators get along at the same time. Sorry, text and video generators get to work at the same time. My name surfaces on the web more and more. It's unbearable. Unbearable. 
Around every corner, every balcony, ceiling, attic, wall, I always feel many pairs of watchful eyes directed straight at me. And now they watch me from the screens, too. But I'll put an end to it. I decided a long time ago. Though, maybe I only decided that only... My body finally crashed into the ground, smashing into millions of tiny pieces like porcelain. I'm cold. Let, let's just go back inside. So that's the mental state she's in. I return to my room. Thankfully, it hasn't changed one bit during the minutes I was outside. Without a second thought, I go towards my laptop and yank the power cable from the outlet. That's it. That's it. That's it. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Matching myself to be outside my mortal shell, but at the same time, still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk. And yet... And yet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know there are times running short. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really small one. I out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. I, um... I nervously scratch my wrists and bite on the lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me? Yeah. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. So now we get back to the bed scene. We don't exactly have many choices past this part, but... We did technically unlock a unique scene with the diving event. Let's just call it that. But with what we did here... What will happen to the ending dream after? A bedtime story. And meaningless. You know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we're just end up wasting time. Focus on something important. Like your trauma. Okay. So now... Is anyone there? Oh, we get green this time. Hold up. We got a different ending somehow. I wake up lying on the cold floor in the center of a cramped room. I look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just naked walls, a single door. I can hear muffled sounds from the other side of it. Scary sounds. That's not a good scene. I hug my knees and wrap myself in my sweater like it's a blanket. It's no use. I'm just chilled to the bone. The room's pretty spacious, but I still can't shake the feeling that I'm trapped inside a suffocating casket. And the faint blue glow that sneaks in through the keyhole only adds to the feeling. Do I want to know what's outside? As if on cue, an inhuman roar comes from the other side. It becomes louder and louder more and more distinct with every passing second. Somebody or something is getting closer. I curl into a ball, trying to make as little space as possible. Maybe I can become invisible, or just become smaller in some miraculous way? In the meantime, the howl becomes unbearably loud, but only for a moment, 
and it sheepishly backs off until I can't hear it anymore. Finally, I decide to stand up. After I do that, I hear another strange sound. It's coming from right above me now. The ceiling moves upwards, squeaking. Small debris is falling onto my head. I squint a little, then raise my hand, trying to touch the ceiling. But it suddenly starts to rise quicker and instantly disappears into the darkness. I'm not in a casket anymore. Well, it wasn't exactly a casket now. It was a well in the form of a casket. The room becomes darker and older. I'll have to do something at some point. Hours pass. I frantically run from one wall to another, delirious. The walls run away from me, making the already spacious room even bigger. In the end, I stand amidst the endless darkness, and only the door is watching me with its eye. I kept purposely avoiding it. I could sometimes hear horrifying rustles and howls on the outside. However, now I don't even have a choice anymore. I slowly come up to the door and reach out towards it. As expected, the door also moves away from me. I continue moving forward with my hand stretched out. I don't want to lose the only source of light in this pitch black darkness. At some point, I just get tired of sneaking up to the door like it's a wild animal, so I lunge at it, trying to grab the handle, but... At the last moment, the door just whizzes away and I fall to the cold floor, unable to keep my balance. It hurts. Stupid door. Stupid, nasty, cursed door. I hate you. Oops. Colors. There we go. Stupid door. Stupid, nasty, cursed door. I hate you. I scream at the top of my lungs. I finally let all the despair I'd bottled up. I slowly realize how horrible the situation I ended up in is. No, 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 no. I don't stop screaming for a moment because I'm. I don't stop screaming for a moment because I'm scared to end up in complete silence. If the reality around me disappears, my twisted imagination will take over, and the realest thing I have right now is my voice. Hey, I can hear you. A voice coming from the other side of the door. I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm here. Come closer. I scream thrice as hard as before. I scream till my throat hurt, till my eyes start, ears start buzzing. My biggest wish right now is just to keep in touch with that person, whoever they are. Hey, where are you? Is that Mon? I rush towards the door, stumbling on the way. I keep running for a minute, then ten, but the door isn't even an inch closer. At the same time, the distance between us hasn't grown either, which means I match it in speed. I just need to make one final push. I gather the last bit of strength I have and push my legs off the ground. The jump feels like an eternity. I stretch out my hand, almost touching the scratching wood, the scratchy wood. Ooh, she trying. I dive face first in the ground with a ridiculous speed. I slide at least 30 more feet like that, thanks to inertia, leaving behind a bloody trail. My hand is still outstretched, trying to grab empty space. Ah! Tears stream down my face, the numerous scratches burn. I try to wipe them, but I scream and yank my hand away from the moment I touch my face. My lips and nose are now a mushy mess. Somebody help. The other side of the door is completely silent. The silence rain... Silence reigns? Yeah, silence reigns for an excruciatingly long time. However, at some point, that silent torture just ends. Hey, I can see you. I try to reply, but stifled whimpers come out of my throat instead of words. Are you hurt? Yes. I stand up from my knees despite continuing to cry. I take a couple of deep breaths and start running again. I keep running for hours. I feel like the door is closer to me by an inch or two now. I almost let myself stop for rest at that thought. I can't rest. I'll catch up to it sooner or later. The voice from the other side of the door keeps asking me how I feel. I let out a heavy, ragged breath and reply. I fall from exhaustion. If I utter even a single word. Still, I'm thankful to them, and don't want them to be silent. After another hour passes, I barely scratch the handle with my nails. I'm almost there. I'm so scared. Why aren't you doing anything? 
I... Uh, why are they doing this to me? Don't they understand how painful this is? Almost there. You're scaring me. Go away. Rage fills my brain. I ignore the pain in my bones and channel all my strength into one final jump. I firmly grasp the handle and open the door. Blinding light hits my eyes. I lose the ground beneath my feet and start falling. Who's the person screaming no there? Oh, what's this a close-up of? I'm lying face down in the grass. I smell water, earth, and the dampness of the night. The wind tickles the back of my head. It howls and jumps around recklessly. Lying down like this is unpleasant and rude when nature's so alive around me with sounds and I'm pretty sure colors too. Stand up, full of anticipation. Also as a good note, we're getting green here when it's explicitly told us she can only see red. I see an endless field, a clear sky without a single star, and a pale moon somewhere very, very far away. I shake my head and try to focus my eyes on anything, but to no avail. My surroundings are just too vast. I feel dizzy. Bam. I'm lying in the thick, wet grass again. But this time, I'm looking at the darkness of a night sky instead of just darkness. Is there any real difference, though? The wind howls. It's clearly upset, but what can I do about it? I hear an indescribable echo coming from far away. A wolf or something else? Does it even matter? I'm in the grass. No one can see me. Ooh. The echo draws closer and closer. At some point, I realize that it's not a wolf. Oh, that's us. I jump up and start turning my head in a panic. Where's the sound coming from? I haven't said that out loud, but got an instant reply. Ooh. Hey, I can hear you. My voice runs across the field, mixing with the rustle of the grass and the howls of the wind. It feels like it's about to get absorbed by them, but... Ooh. Hey, wh where are you? Ooh. I can't understand where I should run to and if I should run at all. Somebody clearly wants me to wants me to find and help them. Maybe they're hurt. The grass tickles my heels while I drag my feet in the direction where I think the sound's coming from. It's just there's not a single tree or stone around, only an endlessly wide field. I hear a resounding painful scream. I shut my eyes and cover my ears, and suddenly I feel scared. The screams turn into a cry. I carefully raise my head, still scared to death. Somewhere far, very far away, among the thick grass, I spot a silhouette. Just a small black spot, but... Hey, I can see you. The silhouette doesn't move, but the sound is definitely coming from its direction. No, it's not a scream, more like a whisper or a wheeze. Oof. Are you hurt? No reaction again, just muffled sounds. Maybe it's the wind going mad, and the black spot is just a stone? Or a tree? I'm gonna guess this is someone with a flashlight that is trying to get you back to the mental ward that you seem to have escaped from. I walk away disappointed, 100 steps, 200 steps. Then I turn around. Surprisingly, the spot hasn't become smaller. I start jogging. The grass is no longer tickling me. It's just whipping my ankles, leaving cuts. A feeling of panic and unexplicable dread grow inside me. A stone? A tree? Why the hell does this feel endless? I don't turn around anymore. I know that it's chasing me. The sound reaching my ears become even stranger, louder, and more distant. The wind's bullying me too, huh? Isn't that right? That's the case, right? Finally, I stop. I ran out of breath. I'm at the brink of dying. At least I think so. The horrifying voice is coming right from behind me. 
turn around instinctively and for some reason try to shield my face, but end up losing balance and falling to the ground. The grass replies with a nasty cackling rustle. I've had enough. Good inner strength. I spring up. The silhouette is still there at the same distance as before. It's standing there without moving an inch. I'm scared here, you know? Why don't you do anything? Zoom in on us, okay. The silhouette trembles and then starts slowly gliding towards me, falling by a new sound, wheezes, moans. Fear shackles me. I can only stand and watch the approaching black spot. My lips are parched. I speak in a voice I don't recognize. You're, you're scaring me, go away. Ugh. Oh, that's a terrifying image. Okay. After that, the spot expands rapidly, and in the blink of an eye, most of the sky in the field is consumed by the sticky, cold darkness. Paralysis finally lets my body go, and I immediately sprint. I run so fast that the grass turns into a dark green mush under my feet. I slip up, fall, run again. I'm going to assume that's the placement for the wind's noise, but... No, 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 no. Ooh. No, go away. I don't know if first turns my head with a crunching sound and the darkness consumes everything. Ugh. So she either got smacked across the back of the head while someone was running after her. I wake up on the cold floor in the center of a cramped room. I look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just naked walls. Okay, so second bit of trauma. So, first playthrough got us an ending that implied that the memories from the first game were a traumatic event where she ended up getting a boy killed who also or who had anxiety issues as well as some other things hampering him down. This ending implies that she was caught in a mental ward, managed to escape temporarily, but then was physically knocked out and brought back to it while she was functionally losing her mind in what I would assume is a mental ward because of blank walls, no furniture. They usually try to avoid anything you can hurt yourself on. Although a wood door and a handle implies something a little bit funky there, but... That does at least expand our current outlook with... Her experiencing trauma both from her father being dead as well as the death of this little kid. But that is only two endings. And from what Steam's telling me, at least, there is still four achievements I need to get still. But how would I do that? Maybe I have to get all the introspective endings, as well as getting all the fireflies? Maybe. And then, yeah, we have to start over fresh. Hmm. What other options can we take during that? If we go for all of the self-analysis, make sure we get all of the... fireflies. That might give us something a little bit different. But I wonder what, specifically. Oh, there's five endings to this. Okay, so we just need to figure out how to get all of the endings, then.
Alright, well let's see if we can at least get one more. Because we have at least notations where we have two potential death scenes to work with. So if we avoid those, that may help a little bit. There's mom. Hi, mom. How are you doing with the metal that's following you around? Let's try to avoid the death. I did bring up a wiki just to double check a couple of things, but we might explore this again next week just to see what the other endings are. Or we could just try and speed through it and get the endings here. We got 20 minutes left technically, so I guess it just depends on what's new and what we can properly avoid then. Kid, you're doing all right. I'm here for you. What a bully. What am I even worried about? You don't need me at all, huh? to wash face. At least she does have the ability to wash her face while she's just in here, so that helps. should let us avoid the first death scene. say whoever did the sprite art for this is doing a very good job i might actually have to double check who the artist is here see if they've done anything else because that is good referencing Don't worry, you've probably had e enough talking going on anyhow, girl. I understand. Want to lie down for a bit? We'll just let her lie down for a bit. She's not exactly in the mood to start sleeping anyways. Ooh, 
do like the idea of sorting your thoughts into fireflies, though. Bye-bye, intrusive thoughts. You'll have to leave us alone for now. supposed to do that. Crap. Okay, well that's the first death scene. I was supposed to avoid that. Whoops. Okay, I've technically failed all the endings I need to actually unlock still by getting this, so... <laughs> Whoops. never actually pressed escape before. Uh, noted. Oh, hey there, Nikki. Welcome in. Hopefully you're here for a good bit of milk and potentially a good amount of depression and nasty thoughts. Uh, Nikita Esperon. Shout out Nikita Esperon. But welcome in all. Hopefully you're having a good evening so far. Uh, joking aside, content warning for this because there's a good amount of suicide and or PTSD and some fairly dark thoughts. I'm playing it because it does not affect me, but I do feel like I need to warn people just in case. But how'd you enjoy your suffering? Since that's apparently a good thing to come into for this one. <laughs> Also because I partially fucked up a little bit. It was in fact a video game. That's at least a good sign. I'm afraid to ask because I've never actually heard of it before, but what kind of video game are we talking about? Also is partly worth mentioning. I've gotten two of the five endings for this so far, and I have screwed up getting the three that I'm missing by getting the first death scene. So... <laughs> I'm kind of just trying to speed through this a little bit. The Suffering is a childhood game of mine. Survival horror in a prison setting. Well, that's always good. Lots of nasty subject matter. Oh, okay. 2004 survival horse and a prison. It's jank but spooky. And all the monsters are based on various execution styles. Mm -hmm. well, that sounds fun. Let me just take a quick peek here. I'm going to assume this is something on Steam. The survival. The suffering. Why did I say survival? Suffering. It's not actually on here. Suffering? Hmm. Dog, actually? Ah, okay. That makes sense. Shoot. 
takes place in her home state? Well, I mean, it's home state, childhood memories. It's going to be one of the better things you'll want to revisit every October if the option actually pops up. Let's see, can I speed run this a little bit? Ah, is that what it is? What's this? Oh, it doesn't actually tell you what that little crack is until you get to the ending portion. Okay, that's fair. Granted, I'm not 100% certain why I'm mentioning the bad themes, because I'm kind of just skipping through everything since this is the third time we've gone through it. But conceptually speaking, there is. And technically flashing lights, considering the first death scene. Although realistically speaking, we'll probably have to visit this next week anyways. Because getting three endings in five minutes is probably a bit much. Also, thank you, Niall, for the hydration. I do kind of need that. <sighs> Getting kind of warm for the fridge. Considering it's 30 degrees at night in October, which is just ridiculous. Oh no, you didn't want to crack from that. Whoops. There we go. Can't hear all of those ones crack, but that's fine. If we desperately need the joint realignment to actually get every single crack I have, I'm gonna need a full body mic, if anything. not like me trying to speed through it. But I can technically explain anything for this if you guys are curious about it. Uh, the Milk series of games, because this is a sequel to the first one, are a series, or are a pair of games at least, that are going over the relatively poor mental state of this girl. The first game doesn't go over much, aside from her just trying to go to the store to buy a bag of milk. And then this one goes into significantly deeper, de well, not significantly deeper details, but a lot more details onto what is going on with her and just everything that has gone fairly wrong for her, which is why she's currently in the state that she's in and needing to talk to either the second person in her head or specifically you, just so that way she has at least someone to voice her concerns to. Although, it does kind of veil her mother as a problem, and I'm wondering if she's not. Because she actively sees her mother as a monster, but from everything that's been shown so far, she does seem controlling, but she is still trying to take care of her daughter, as far as I can tell. There's fireflies behind that. Hey, you can't finish searching early. Probably double check where all of the fireflies are actually tied to. Does the bag have one? We at least got a story off the bag, but... Granted, this girl is a comp sci major, which mildly helps her case. Oh, 
he does tend to make a good amount of comparisons to either the internet or just the systems that are built that would simulate everything like that. But it does not seem like she lasted super long when it comes down to there. Oh, there was one in there. <laughs> Thank you, doll, for the box. We do kind of need to make sure to pack up our feelings a little bit during this one. Life mod? Not sure what you mean by that one, but welcome all the same. I think it's been a while since we were last here, hasn't it? It has been a bit since we were last here. Neat. The Steve doll. I am technically a little bit stiff, yeah. That's why I have the joint realignment, to be honest with you. It helps me to crack some extra things. Um... That's an L, not an I. Oh, it is an L. Yeah, my eyes are a little bit drank tonight. I'll have to ask the mechanic about that tomorrow. <laughs> Stealth mod. I mean, the stealth mod is always appreciated, yes. Apologies. My brain does not necessarily work too hard when I'm trying to focus on... ...depressive topics. If only because I'm curious to see where they go with them. But this one is a neutral ending. Either way, I'll save you guys the trouble of having to go through the diving scene, but... Let it be known that your second death is made by this choice. Now what will actually happen here? Blurred out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget. Yeah. You've been talking a lot this time, girl, and I don't blame you. You are trying to go over your thoughts after the perilous trip to the store where you had some problems getting sure you got your box of milk. Oh, there we go. Move over to comfy bed scene with a surprisingly not horror-themed background this time. Bedtime story, which we don't do because we're bad at this. And then dream sequence, which because I fucked things up, we should get the street ending. Yeah, the street ending. The street ending is very comparable to pretty much the first game as a whole, where you as the regular girl are just trying to walk home and then you run into this specific child and pretty much relive the exact scene that you do for the first game. But we, A, we have seen it before. Won't let you save here either. Makes sense, it's an ending. Oh good, this clock does actually just go to zero, zero. Cool, I'm glad I actually found one that doesn't just swap over to 2401. I haven't actually been paying attention to that when I've been ending stream the past couple days, so that's a bit of a whoopsie from my side. 
20 minutes till closing. And we are at the four hour mark and around where I usually end. So I guess we'll come back to this next week just to see what we can do about those last three endings and just see what we can do there. Because I'd like to unravel the full story on this where I can. But I don't quite feel like staying up for another hour to do it tonight. We'll come back to it. I am liking this, though. Like, it goes over some heavy topics, but that's not inherently a bad thing when it comes down to it. Let's see here. Who is online right about now? Just as a general reminder, just while I'm taking a peek here. But I will be streaming tomorrow around the same time. Fridays we're kind of sticking with Baldur's Gate, just because it gives me a chance to go along if I need to, just to finish up what I'm working on at the time. Uh, we're currently working with our Dragonborn Warlock Bard. Just trying to see if we can talk our way out of situations, and if not, we can just beat them down with Eldritch Blast. Because when in doubt, having just a little bit of Eldritch Blast tends to be helpful, at least. Let's see here. Hell is doing Siege of Dungeon. When in doubt, blast it. Exactly. Sometimes you just need a little bit of Eldritch Blast. Oh, we could go over to Saito. Saito's playing off. I'd say it's tangentially relatable. Raid 1, Raid 2, Raid Saito, Saito, and There we go. I remember how to spell stuff. But do want to thank everybody for stopping by. Like I said, we'll be back tomorrow with some Baldur's Gate shenaniganry. We're still in Act 1. I'm playing that game incredibly slowly, but we'll eventually hit Act 2. <laughs> I'm going to assume we'll finish it by end of year with the speed I'm going at, but that's fine. Uh, aside from that, though, uh, Saturday I do my art stuff, as long as my attention span actually lets me do that. We'll need to finish off our Cherno drawing. God, it's been like a month since I started that. Whoops. Yeah, we'll work on the chair no drawing on Saturday. Should be alright. But hopefully you have a fantastic rest of your nights. I'll be back tomorrow if you need a good place to chill with significantly less depressing topics. And then aside from that, that's all I got. So enjoy your rest, and I'll talk with you later. Bye-bye. Five. Four. Three. Two. One.